PCN is brought to your community thanks to the support of Armstrong. PCN, Pennsylvania's neighborhood. Pennsylvania's egg farms, incredible protein, eggs. It's interactive ice cream fun at the Turkey Hill Experience, located in Columbia, PA, just south of Hershey. Create your own virtual ice cream flavor and packaging. Milk our mechanical cows and star in your own Turkey Hill commercial. Visit turkeyhillexperience.com for more information. Championship. Our matchup, the Imhotep Charter Panthers at 12 and 2, taking on the unbeaten South Fayette Lions. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back for day three of the football state championships after a day off to clear the snow. It's a little bit cold, it's a little bit blustery, but we've got good field, field conditions for this double A championship. Alongside Steve Degler, my name is Bob McCool. We've got two teams from the opposite sides of the state going up against one another as well. Imhotep. The first Philadelphia Public League team to take on a state championship in football going up against the WPL champion in South Fayette. And, Steve, it is opposite sides of the state. And in terms of how they need to be successful today, it's opposite styles of football. There's no question, Bob. South Fayette is a team. They won't hide it. They want to move the football through the air. Yes, they can run the ball. It's in the arsenal, but they try to move the ball with the passing game. For Imhotep, they can throw the ball as well, but they rely on the running game. Just under 300 yards per game on the ground. They do that behind a gigantic offensive line. Albie Crosby may be a little guy, but he's got a lot of big guys to protect him. In his second season, 28 wins and just three losses getting his team to this state championship a lot of people thought they might get here a year ago it didn't happen but he's back here now in his second season as a head coach and he's got some tremendously talented players around him and it's not likely and not usual for us to highlight a defensive back in our pregame but deandre scott is not your typical defensive back he is a special player game changer no matter where he is on the field and what role he is playing he's not in the offensive game plan a whole mo a whole lot that one carry last week for 75 yards and a touchdown against birth Cat Burks catholic he is great in the secondary he has intercepted four passes this year but he can be dangerous in the return game in his career 14 times he has taken a return punt interception kickoff fumble back for touchdowns and when you think about that with a team that passes the ball as much as South Fayette does that certainly will be an issue for Joe Rossi's team now in his seventh season as a head coach back here to the state finals for the second time 68 wins and 16 losses he was here in 2010 and back in 2012 and 2013 thanks to the Broomball brothers it was Kristen in 2010 it is Brett a record-setting pace for for the junior and Brett Brumbaugh is a guy who has really grown up in this program literally he's gone from water boy to the starting quarterback in the state championship game having an incredible junior season over 3600 yards 38 touchdowns it is a little windy here today that certainly is not going to bother him he can flat out throw the football in any conditions and it didn't hurt him in the WPL championship game at Heinz Field and that's brought down a few NFL arms over the course of time but again, it is a team in South Fayette who's a little bit of a surprise because a lot of people assumed that they would ultimately not get through the WPL playoffs. It's a different story. Imhotep Charter, as I said, the first Philadelphia Public League team to make it to a state championship in football, and that's where we're coming from. We're going, we're going Philadelphia against Pittsburgh in this double-A final. Imhotep out of the Philadelphia Public League, South Fayette out of McDonald in the WPIAL. Again, they were a surprise in the sense that they beat Al Equipa to get here on the other side. Imhotep get, takes care of Katasakwa, the District 11 champion. They shut them out, and then they also shut out Burks Catholic, the District 3 champion, in the semifinal. 
for South Fayette after getting through Aliquippa. It was pretty. It was a much easier win over Carn City and then a nail biter against Hickory to get to this state final. But again, a team in Imhotep. A lot of people thought they might get here last year. South Fayette, maybe not so much. You're right, Bob. This is clearly the favorite. I mean, Imhotep was the team that everybody thought back in August would definitely be here in December to play for the AA state championship. You talked to South Fayette coach Joe Rossi. He said there weren't people talking about us in District 7 at all. Beaver Falls, Aliquippa, they got a lot of the accolades early on, but they have had a tremendous season at 15 to know and find themselves back here in Hershey. If you'd like to find out a little bit more about these teams, we invite you to head to our website, PCN TV. Hit the PCN Select app, and you can find out all the information on all the teams. We've got another game coming your way tonight. Of course, the Quad A final still to come your way, but it is a action, an information-packed opportunity for you to find out a little bit more about these teams, and we're going to find out a little bit more about who's going to get the football first. We go to the coin toss, the national anthem, as the AA football championship comes your way. Imhotep Charter taking on South Fayette. Number four, DeAndre Druid Park. Number five, DeAndre Scott. Six, Six and three, Kyra Park. Okay, fellas, Green, Green, you've won the toss. You elected to receive the ball. You elected to defend play. So, Green, you want to switch over here? DJ Moore. South Fan has won the toss. They've been elected to receive. Imhotep will be kicking off to begin the game. Your officials for today's game, your referee, Rob Gramola, umpire, Harry Flaw, linesman, William McHale, line judge, William Burton, field judge, Dennis Beck, side judge, James Kemp, your back judge, David Anderson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, prior to kickoff, we ask you, please rise. Gentlemen, if you'll please remove your hats as we honor the United States of America. Salute its leaders and members of the armed forces with the singing of the Star Spangled Banner to be sung today by Northern York High School's Jamie Cashin and Madison Landis. Ladies and gentlemen, we present with great pride and great gratitude our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we Broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets proclaimed the bombs bursting in air. South Fayette 15 and 0, Imhotep Charter 12 and 2. The two losses for Imhotep. It was Eastern Christian Maryland. We'll talk more about that game a little bit later on. They lost to them 36 to 28, and on Thanksgiving Day they lost to Martin Luther King 32 30. Of course, for South Fayette, different story as they win the WPL championship and unbeaten coming in. And we bring in the third member of our broadcast team working on the sidelines, braving the conditions. Mike Zambelli. All right, thanks, Bob. Each team with an extra day to prepare and both coaches turning what you think might be some adversity into a positive. Talk to Joe Rossi. He said, we were actually an hour into our trip on our way to Hershey when we found out they got in here Friday, actually came to the AAA final and uh, sat with the Bishop McDevitt cheering squad for a little bit of time on Friday night. They had a couple of workouts on Saturday, had an emotional meeting on Saturday evening that Coach Rossi said was unbelievable. Uh, talked with Alvy Crosby for 
Grimm Hotep Charter. He said, we were still in Philadelphia. He said, we stayed there, got in here Saturday morning, had a workout indoors yesterday afternoon, had a good meeting last night. Guys, coaches doing what they do best, dealing with adversity. They're ready to go here this afternoon. All right, thank you very much, Mike. On the kickoff, it'll be South Fayette on the return. It's Connor Beck, finds the daylight across the 30-35, lost the football. And it looks as if South Fayette has the football. Imhotep says they have it, but they're going to say it is South Fayette football. On a pretty good return for Connor Beck. Lost it across the 35. They'll spot it first and 10 at the 36-yard line. Brett Brumbra, as we talked about in our open, 68% completion percentage on the season. has thrown for over 3,600 yards and 38 touchdowns with just eight interceptions to go along with it. He'll start in a naked backfield. Four receivers to his right and one to his left. And right away, he finds an open receiver. That open receiver is his leading receiver of the season, Justin Watson, who makes the catch across the 40 as we take a look at the guys who will protect Brett Brumbaugh up front. Spencer German is the center. Zach Radenick and Zach Walker are the guards. Ben Berkowitz and Anthony Davidson are the tackles. The Watson who made that catch, Hayden Orler, Ryan Schmieder, Connor Beck, Logan Sharp, they'll all be in pass formation. Grant Fetchett is their tailback as the defense for Imhotep is gonna wrap them up now as they keep it on the ground with Brumbaugh. The defense for Imhotep up front in a 4-3 defensive alignment. Nasir Upshur and Chaka Tony are the ends with Tyrone Barge and Khalid Kennedy inside. The outside backers, Shaquille Jones and Randell Hunter with Steven Denby in the middle. Corners, Zaheer Wright and Nyreem Thrones with the safeties, DeAndre Squat, Scott and Quadim Starks. And again, they find this time Connor Beck for South Fayette, and Connor Beck will take it across the 50-yard line, move the chains for the Lions in Imhotep territory at the Panther 48-yard line. 79th catch for Beck. He's one of those guys that is always around the football. He is one that makes big plays with regularity and a real go-to guy for Brumbaugh. This time with a man beside him. That's Fetchett, their leading returner, their leading rusher. But before he can get going, South Imhotep gets in there and breaks it up with Tyrone Bars leading the charge. Fetchett, kind of the unsung guy in this offense. He has rushed for over 1,300 yards in his senior season, but good pursuit inside. Albie Crosby said, we get a lot of pressure with just our front four, and they broke through that time for a loss. Second down, and we'll call it about 12. Rumbaugh in a world of trouble, and he'll dump it off. Being Chased out of the pocket. Coming through was Pamir right down it. Chasing Brumba out of the pocket. And this is the pressure from up front. He does not think they're going to have to blitz a whole lot today just because of what the front four can do. And Brumbach never had time to get turned and look downfield to make a throw. Second, excuse me, third down coming up now and 13. And a flag is on the snap. Do you get 15 yards there? Because you had three guys drawn <laughs> off. I don't think it's cumulative. There is our officiating crew. Robert Grimola is our referee. Dead ball, encroachment on the defense. Five yard penalty, he made third down. Robert Grimola, as I said, is our referee. The umpire is Harry Flawed. Linesman is William McHale. Line judge is William Burt. Field judge, Dennis Beck. Side judge, James Kemp. And the back judge is David Anderson out of District 3 with the whistles today on now, we'll call it third down and eight coming up and more movement at the line of scrimmage. And give credit to the quarterback for getting them jump off sides. You alter your cadence up there and you have an aggressive defense. You know it's a team that likes to get pressure off that front four. Dead ball, encroachment on the defense. Five yard penalty, makes third down. And that time, Bob, they had three down linemen. Albie Crosby not happy that his team is jumping off sides here and letting guys know about it. What was third and long is now third and very short. And now they'll look to the sidelines as they do in that spread offense. On third down and three, they can keep it on the ground now. Good blocking, it's gonna get them around the edge. Grant fetch it on the carry. And close to a first down. They have not yet marked it. They need to get to the 38-yard line of Imhotep to move the chains, and that's right about where they spot the football. And there it is, first down for South Fayette. After a third and 13, they end up now with a first and 10. The drive stays alive at the 38-yard line. I like the call that time by Joe Rossi. Imhotep went with three down linemen again. 
dropped an extra defensive back in there, so they put the ball on the ground. And look at the effort by Fetch it to get that extra yardage to move the chains. Beck goes in motion left side to right. They're going to swing it out of the backfield. It's nearly intercepted. Great job defensively by Cormier Wright Downing as he saw that they were going to go to Fetch it out of the backfield. He was all over. How about what we've seen from Downing already? Just a junior, we saw the pressure straight ahead on the pass rush, and here he is out in coverage in the flat doing an excellent job. And really, this is fortunate for South Fayette that the ball was a bit overthrown. If it's not, it might be six the other way. They list him at six foot 205. Either he's got a lot of sweatshirts on or he's that jersey or he's a lot bigger than 205. But he moves well and then so does this guy. Justin Watson who makes the catch inside the 35, bumped out of bounds close to the 30 yard line. It'll put South Fayette in a third down and pretty short. Good throw, but a very crisp route run by Watson, an extremely intelligent young man, 4.2 grade point average, had a couple of Division I-A scholarship offers. Instead, he's going to enroll in the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania in the fall. He actually got bumped out of bounds at the 32. I thought he got a little closer to the 30, but they mark him out of bounds at the 32. So it's now third down and four. And there's more movement at the line of scrimmage, and that's going to give South Fayette another easy move of five yards and a first down as well. So taking advantage of the aggressiveness of Imhotep. And it's now given them a, it gave them a easier opportunity to pick up a first down. Now the it's given them an actual Coachman first down. On the defense, five yard penalty results in the first down. Boy, Albie Crosby is not happy and can you blame him? They have just given away a huge chunk of yardage on this opening drive. And one of two things happens now. Either they continue to jump off sides or they become a little more tentative coming off the football, and now that's advantage for Brumbaugh. Instead, it's now first and 10 for the 27th. Brumbaugh finds a receiver, and a great lowering of the shoulder to get himself some extra yardage. That's their tight end by definition. Logan Sharp, 200-pounder, bowls himself over one defender and picks up what might be another first down. It will be at the 16-yard line. Oh, this is a tight end play, too. Pressure coming, dragging underneath. He does not run out of bounds. He takes on the tackler, takes on a second tackler, and Brumbaugh gets rid of it just in time. Little dump throw over the middle, and Logan Sharp breaking two tackles to get the first down. His 28th reception of the season, which is third best on the team for South Fayette behind Watson and Connor Beck. Beck now goes in motion from the left slot to the right. And Brumbaugh looking his way across the middle and the pass is caught at the five. First down, goal to go, coming up for South Fayette. Oh, what a great route run by Beck. Coming in motion from left to right. He runs right at DeAndre Scott, took him right on, and then curled into the middle, and a great throw by Brumbaugh right on target for first and goal at the six-yard line. 79th catch of the season for Connor Beck. Puts them in a first and goal at the six yard line. Let me correct myself, that's the 80th. If we already got caught one already in this game, two catches now for 19 yards. First down, goal to goal, and more movement at the line of scrimmage. This one will cost them two and a half, two, cost them three yards on their fourth penalty, and it's going to be first and goal now from the three on half the distance. Yeah, if you're Albie Crosby, you really hate to do this, but you might have to call a timeout here just to keep your team settled down. Good ball. Coachman on the defense. Half the distance of the goal remains first down. So four procedure penalties now. There you see it. Four penalties for a total of 18 yards because that was only half the distance to the goal line, but it has kept this drive alive for South Fayette. He'll go to the ground game. And a guy who they use inside a lot for the inside the goal line situations is J.J. Walker, 5'9", 180 pounder. Gets the handoff, he'll get maybe a yard and that's it. It'll be second and goal. Walker is an outstanding defensive player. Try to pick up the tough yardage. Was stood up after a pickup of just one. There's 19 touchdowns on the season. Fetch it, their leading rusher over 1,300 yards has 20. And now they'll bring Zach Walker, who had been their fullback, back in the backfield. Where's number 54? Because he's now on the offensive line. So it's twin fullbacks and brothers in the backfield. But it's J.J. Walker who gets the call, lowers the shoulder. He didn't get in. It does not appear. No signal from the officials. They're going to spot him at the one. It'll be third and goal. J.J. Walker, a two-time WPIAL wrestling champ in his freshman and sophomore years, got thrown back that time just shy of the goal line. We see the same thing here, Bob. So again, they bring in the extra offensive lineman and then move one of those offensive linemen, Zach Walker, back to the fullback spot. Same formation. 
And it's the quarterback this time, Brumbaugh on the quarterback sneak. And flag on the play as Brumbaugh's in the end zone. There is no signal from the officials, which would give you an indication that this one's probably going to be against the Lions. There you have it. Procedure against South Fayette. So the first one against the Lions will put them now in a third and goal back at the six. Opening possession of this football game. 7.38 still remaining in the first quarter. This might be a good thing, Bob. This gives them a little more operating room. The pass play is definitely in order here. It opens up the field a little bit for Joe Rossi's team without a doubt. Remains third down. So four penalties early on against Imhotep, and the first now against South Fayette. Puts the Lions in a third and goal. We'll call it from the six-yard line. Beck splits out to the left. Watson splits to the right. They put the backs in the eye for the first time. Play action fake. Broombot does look to throw wide open in the corners. Watson for the touchdown. Justin Watson in the end zone. His 21st touchdown reception of the season. And South Fayette on their opening possession puts the points on the board. Defensive back stopped. Watson just kept on going. Faking in, going to the flag. Wide open back of the end zone for the touchdown. Another great throw by Brumbaugh. And again, that penalty does indeed give them a little bit more operating room in the arm of Brumbaugh, his 39th touchdown pass of the season. Now he'll take the hold for the extra point attempt from Brian Coyne. Snap is good, the hold is down, and the kick splits the uprights. 7.34 remaining in the first quarter. South Fayette strikes on its first possession. Imhotep gets it for the first time when we come back to Hershey Park Stadium. Today, a fever will be treated with warmth. A cut with more than a bandage. Today, a twisted ankle will come with a nice shoulder to lean on. Because today, the most considerate and professional urgent care will be found right around the corner at MedExpress. Just like it is every day. MedExpress is open 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week. Visit MedExpress.com to find a location near you. Guys, dig in. I learned a new word today, Mom. What word did you learn, honey? These fish sticks taste like I know just what this family needs. Games on at Arugas. Arugas has something for everyone. The food is fresh, and we've got enough TVs to guarantee your game is on. So relax and enjoy some time with the family. Stop into Arugas for all-you-can-eat boneless wings from 5 to 9 for only $10.99. The game's on at Arugas. This is your turf. Maybe you thought it was easy to get that sheep in our farm show commercial last year. Well, it wasn't. At first, she didn't take direction and wouldn't budge. Then she ran in the wrong direction several times. The worst part is she got all the praise when we were finished and I was ignored. You know, animals are born scene stealers. She's right behind me, isn't she? The Pennsylvania Farm Show starting January 4th on PCN. Couldn't have scripted a better start for South Fed as they're out to a 7 to nothing lead. I'm joined by the brothers Brumball to my right, Kristen to my left, Luke. Two very interested bystanders. Kristen, I'll start with you. You played in this game a couple of years ago. It didn't go your way. What were you able to share with your younger brother to get him off to this good start? I said, I said go out and have fun. You know, this is a heck of an experience. It's, it's a once-in-a-lifetime type of thing. So go out, have fun, and just play loose. And, from the, from the looks of that first drive, it looks like he's doing that. Doesn't get much better than that, Luke. Uh, you didn't get a chance to play in this game, but you're a freshman in college right now. Uh, emotions running high here watching your brother operate and, and orchestrate that drive down the field. Definitely, yeah. I, like you said, I didn't get a chance to play in this game, and I just told him, have fun, go out. You deserve this. You worked hard. And very few kids get a chance to play in a state championship game like this. So I said, have fun, good luck, and go win the game. Kristen, this bit of sweet for you. Every pass he completes, he's, he's breaking all your records. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I always said records are meant to be broken, right? And I couldn't be more proud of somebody to do it than my own younger brother. So I, I wish him the best, and I hope, he, I hope he shatters all the records, you know? Guys, enjoy the rest of the afternoon. And, uh, Bob, I'll tell you, you can only imagine they had enough quarterbacks at the picnics in the Brumball family during the summer months. Yeah, Thanksgiving holiday must just be talking football, football, and more. Here's DeAndre Scott on the return going east to west and a flag gets thrown in the process 
back inside the five yard line. And South Fayette saying there was a fumble as well. It's going to remain Panther football, but the question is how far back will they start? They're already at the nine on the spot, and another flag against the Panthers. This is going to be the fifth early on against Imhotep. And again, it'll be half the distance once they mark off the penalty. Deion, Andre Drew at Parks, the starting quarterback for Imhotep. 57% completion percentage on the season for the junior. Then they go blocking the back on the return team. Be first down. So they'll spot it at the two yard line. It was half the distance from where the penalty occurred. So in terms of total yardage, it's not that bad for Imhotep. Different story in terms of what they've given up. And now starting first and 10 from their own two. High formation behind Jewett Parks on the handoff, trying to get outside. And it's Scott who starts out in the backfield. Trying to give them a spark early on, but South Fayette is waiting for the senior. As we take a look at the starters up front behind a big offensive line, it's Gordon Thomas in the middle with John Carlo Valentine, Aaron Ruff, who's headed to Temple as the guards. Antoine Williams, Talim Muhammad are the tackles. And Seer Upshur, Upshur is the tight end. DJ Moore, Khalif Clements are the wideouts. Eddie Lynch is the fullback. And we'll see a bevy of tailbacks. But it starts with DeAndre Scott trying to give them a spark after getting one yard. Now he tries to break a couple tackles. And it will get out to about the eight yard line. It'll be third down now coming up for Imhotep. From the eight, it'll be third about four. This is an offense that has averaged 47 points a game and 397 yards per game, 290 on the ground. They're backed up here, trying to move the chains, give themselves a little breathing room. Again, out of the eye, C.J. McCollum is the fullback. And no running room at all for Nasir Bonner. And we had listed as the starter. He is their leading rusher on the season. As we look at the Lions defense that comes up with the stand early on. Spencer German, Anthony Davidson as ends. Ben Berkowitz, Bryce Tr Christoph are the tackles. 4-4 defensive alignment, Hayden Orler and Ryan Schmieder are the outside backers. The Walker brothers inside, JJ and Zach. The corners are Hunter Hayes and Justin Watson with Connor Beck, the free safety. And that defense has come up with a stand against Imhotep on its first drive. And they'll force the Panthers to punt the football. And they'll do so from their own goal line. DeAndre Scott actually handling the punting instead of the normal punter, DJ Moore. It'll take a good roll for Imhotep. And South Fayette will start, however, in their second possession with a 7-0 lead after a 44-yard punt, but still great field position for South Fayette to get their second drive underway from just across midfield. Our crew this weekend eating well, thanks courtesy of Brickers Pizza, BrickersPizza.com for more information. South Fayette, after a 14-play drive on their first possession, put the ball in the end zone. We'll start this one first and 10 from their own 47-yard line. Albie Crosby's worst nightmares have come true in the opening five, only seven minutes of this football game. Joe Rossi went to bed last night and dreamed that this game would start this way. A perfect start for South Fayette offensively and defensively. And we're ball right back to work. Looking to go deep. The shark is wide open. And he will walk 20. 10, no one will catch him now. Touchdown, Lions. 53 yards on the hookup, one play, and South Fayette is up two scores. Lone coverage, obviously, by the Panthers, and Logan Sharp wide open for his sixth touchdown pass reception of the season. The perfect start just got a little bit better. <laughs> and you can't be any more open as a tight end. Another well-thrown ball by Brett Brumbaugh for his 40th touchdown this season. Coin on to attempt his second extra point of this first quarter. And this two is good. 5.15 to go now in quarter number one, and it's now a 14-0 South Fayette lead. Well, Joe Rossi listed several Division I schools that are interested in the junior Brumba, and I think that line might get a little bit longer after what he has been able to do so far today. Great protection that time. Sharp all by himself. Just a matter of catching the football, which can be very tough to do when you're that wide open, and then waltz into the end zone from 53 yards out. Four-man rush, they never got close that time. 
sharp behind the secondary, scores easily, and it's still early, Bob, but if you're South Fayette, what you want to do is get a couple of scores ahead of this Imhotep team, get them out of their game plan a little bit. It's still 5.15 to go in the first quarter, but this start is absolutely perfect for the Lions. We talked with Joe Rossi about it, and I said, I assume that part of your game plan is to try to get them into third and long situations. Well, they just got them in the long situations now. If, in fact, they can get them, as Steve said, out of their game plan, make them want to think they have to throw the football to get back in the game in a hurry. After a 14-play, 64-yard, 4-minute, 26-second drive, polar opposite for South Fayette in their second, one play, 53 yards, and a good 10 seconds off the clock. And that's a guy who could change it in a hurry. DeAndre Scott back, hoping for an opportunity on the return, along with Tyleek Rayner. And they angled one away from him. Actually, the, the kick was perfect on the first one. Toward the sideline, on the ground a little bit, allowed the coverage team to get down. Now a flag, we called on the, the kickoff, the back of the line of scrimmage for South Fayette. It'll be a procedure penalty against South Fayette. Somebody over anxious. Approachment on the kicking team. Five yard penalty, we kick. Kick him five yards further back. Sal and Himotep hoping that'll change their field position a little bit as they started from their own two, thanks to a bad return and a penalty on that return as well. And don't discount this offense for the Lions either. We talked about the numbers for Himotep, but South Fayette scoring 45 points a game. They're giving up just eight and a half, and they average on offense 444 yards per contest. They're pretty good on both sides of the football. Yes, they are. Mike Zampelli talking with Kristen Grubba about his records that Brett is closing in on. Number of WPL records he is closing in on. As his kickoff takes a couple of hops, fielded by Nasir Bonner. Bonner breaks the tackle at the 35, then going side to side, and coming up and hitting him hard is Hunter Hayes and spinning him backwards. And coming into this game, Brett Grubba needed 111 yards to break his older brother's record for passing yards in a season. And by my numbers, he's got 94 already. And we have 5.05 left to go in the first quarter. I think that one's a goner. <laughs> first and 10 for Imhotep. A lot better field position for the Panthers for their second series with 5.05 to go in that first quarter, starting from their own 36-yard line. Andre Druid Parks from the shotgun with backs on either side of it, and another flag thrown at the line of scrimmage. Dead ball, false start, the offense. Five yard penalty, first step. Well, I'm gonna throw something out there, it's a, a little strange. You know, nerves really run through both teams, obviously, but for South Fayette, maybe these guys didn't play in the game, but their coaching staff knows what this is all about. From a preparation standpoint, that's got to be some sort of advantage here in the first quarter. No doubt about it. South Fayette took on a West Catholic team in 2010, and West Catholic just overran them eventually. And here's Druid Parks, can't find anybody open downfield, and so here we go right out of the gate in their first play, in essence, of this drive. Already, Imhotep is looking to throw it. No one open, and Parks has to scramble instead. He'll pick up four of the five yards they lost on the penalty. So far, six penalties, 25 yards called against Imhotep. He all but threw that ball, somehow kept it in his hand as there was good coverage downfield, was able to get five yards out of it to make up for the penalty. Again, they split the backs in the backfield on either side of Druid Parks. Handed off this time to Tyleek Rayner, sophomore in there as one of those backs, along with Mike Waters. Both of them are sophomores. And he'll pick up five more. So it'll be a third down of about five coming up now for Imhotep, just across the 40. We'll call it the 41-yard line. Sear Bonner has run for over 1,000 yards, over 1,100 yards to be exact. Rainer and Waters each have run for over 850. Three receivers this time to the right side, one to the left. With Rainer in the backfield, sidecar right of Parks. Snap a little slow to get back there. Rainer, however, with a quick speed, gets outside, dies for what should be a first down. 
He's right about where they needed to get, which was the 46-yard line to move the chain. Well, that's a great effort by Rayner because Hayden Orler had established the outside. He put a boundary up there, number 12 in green. Forced the cutback, which is what you want to do. Make the runner go where you have help defensively, but Rayner with that great speed made a quick cut upfield and just got enough for the first down. First first down of the football game for Imhotep. This time it'll be Waters outside, makes a cut and makes another man miss. He'll dive inside the 45 of South Fayette and close to another Imhotep first down. And for the first time today, Bob, you see a little jump on that far sideline where the Panthers are located. They're trying to get themselves quickly back into this game with their running attack. A little counter, big hole off the left side and a good hard run by Mike Waters, just a sophomore. Picks up 11 on the front of the play. His first carry. There's DeAndre Scott, but they just cannot get him free. South Fayette is clearly zoning in on number five. A little direct snap there to Scott, and he had to wait for it to get there, fumbled it, and will lose yardage on the play. So that happened in the play where Tommy Rayner ran for five yards. I thought the snap was a little slow to get there and almost messed up the timing. That time it definitely messed up the timing for DeAndre Scott. He loses three yards on the play, so officially DeAndre Scott's touched three times for just a total of three yards. Two receivers to the right for Parks. One to the left now, that's Waters who goes in motion. They'll hand it off to him on the jet sweep. Gets a great block, but he's going to, the pursuit is ultimately going to get to him. And a flag thrown in the backfield as well. This one might very well be against Imhotep, thrown behind their offensive line. And a preliminary indication is another penalty of a hold this time against Imhotep. Great job of staying home by the Lions defense, not fooled at all. It's a penalty you probably decline and make it third down and long, I would think. I would think that would be the case. Rather than give them another opportunity. Illegal block in the back in the offense. Penalties decline. Third down. They do indeed take the loss of a yard. It'll be third down, and we'll call it 14 now. Right there's your penalty. Number 18, Nasir Lewis getting Ryan Schmieder with that block in the back. And even with that, still pretty good pursuit by the South Fayette defense. Third down and 14 coming up for Imhotep at the South Fayette 47-yard line. Three receivers split out the left, one to the right. They would have looked for the little slip screen, but Drew Parks cannot pull the trigger before the pursuit of South Fayette. Four guys around the quarterback to drop him back on the Imhotep side of the 45-yard line. 35 sacks in their first 15 games, and they come up with another one here. So what was a promising drive underway by Imhotep goes the other direction in a hurry. Linebackers coming. Walker off the left side of the defense that forces Parks to the other side, and he is just swarmed under by the green jerseys. DeAndre Scott will punt the football to high kick, and a fair catch called for by Connor Beck. And so South Fayette already on top, 14-0. We'll get the football, and Brett Broomball back to work for the third series. Wow, that was both walkers blitzing from the linebacker spot. And Zach got there first, coming from the right of Parks. It forced him to step left, but directly into the path of J.J. Walker, who was the first one to get to the quarterback. And that is something that Joe Ross talked to us about before the game. You see the numbers for Broomball to start, that he felt as if they saw some openings against that big offensive line where they could slide guys through. And then the Walker brothers were the guys who slid through. And, Help force the sack. Here's the setup screen for Brumbaugh, but right there to make the play and blow it up was Tyrone Barge from his defensive tackle spot. Comes out and grabs a hold of the guy who catches the pass, which I believe was Connor Beck. It's a pretty impressive play by a guy that goes 6'1", 276, to again get out there in the flat in coverage and get on a running back and make the tackle. It was Connor Fetchett who did make the catch. His first of the game, he loses three on the play. Ryan Schmieder now shifts into the right side. He's the lone receiver on that side with three receivers on the left for Brumbaugh. Fetchett is the lone back in the backfield. Watson, Beck, and Hayden Euler across the left side. Beck looking at back across the middle on that drag route again for Watson, who makes the catch 
and immediately gets brought down at about the 31-yard line. It'll put the Lions in a third and short. They have done a great job the last couple series of protecting Brumbaugh. The 53-yard touchdown pass on the first play in their last possession, he had no pressure whatsoever. A nice little pocket to throw from, and that offensive line is really doing a nice job protecting him at the moment. Third down and three now for South Bay. And again, movement at the line of scrimmage as Nasir Upshur appeared to jump off sides from his defensive end spot. Albie Crosby just can't believe what he's watching right now, and that's going to give South Fayette another easy first down. Dead ball, Coachman on the defense. Five-yard penalty, first down. And as a coach, Bob, these are penalties you can't even question. They're very obvious that they're occurring, and they're occurring against the Panthers. Brumba, as impressive as the arm is, you have to like the way he's conducted himself around the line of scrimmage as well. He obviously has the cadence part of this down very, very well. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. It's been all Lions in the first quarter. 14-0 South Fayette on top of Imhotep Charter after one in the Class 2A final. South Fayette continues on the drive when we return to Hershey Park Stadium after this on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. workout athletes need to get their energy back go for complete refreshment chocolate milk with the right mix of high quality protein and carbs chocolate milk builds and refuels tired muscles electrolytes replenish what's lost in sweat and calcium and vitamin d strengthen growing bones low fat chocolate milk is the great tasting way to give your body what it needs after a hard workout workout refuel with chocolate milk I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That changed my life. At that moment, it hit me. This is why I joined the Guard. We're soldiers, always ready to protect our country. But we've also got communities, family, friends, neighbors, who count on us. I couldn't believe it. I just saved a life with somebody from my hometown. See what it means to be a citizen soldier at NationalGuard.com. Oh, the holiday season. Mall crowds may be frightful, but to shop at PCNTV.com is delightful. And in case you don't know, the PCN store is the way to go. No stress, no crowds, no lines. A computer is all you need. Find that perfect gift for that someone on your list, all at your fingertips indeed. So what are you waiting for? Put a little PCN into your stocking, all at the PCN store. 14-0 South Fayette on top of Imhotep. And as we get into the early weeks of January, it's always farm show time in Pennsylvania. And our coverage here on PCN starts January the 4th. Exclusive live coverage from the farm show. Right now, we start the second quarter, first and 10 for South Fayette. Brett Broombaugh in some trouble, and he'll throw the incomplete pass. That'll snap a string of six straight completions for Broombaugh. Alongside Steve Douglas, my name is Bob McCool. We invite you to stick around. Coming up at halftime, Mike Zambelli, Jim Wills with our halftime show. South Fayette and Imhotep, second quarter of the double-A final. The Lions on top, 14-0. And that time they got some pressure on Broombaugh because they brought a linebacker. Shaquille Jones came in on a blitz, and Broombaugh did a good thing just to get rid of the football and avoid the loss. Eight out of 10 for Brett Broombaugh to start. By the way, you sure it's not farm show week this week? It sure feels like, like the it, weather we've had. The ball right back to action, looking to go deep, looking for Watson as a step. 30, foot race down the sideline, and Justin Watson will go the distance. 64 yards on the score. South Bay at three possessions, three touchdowns. What a touch. Touch and arm strength, both on the same throw. Looked like it was off the back foot. Brumbaugh was under some pressure. Watson got a step. 
and then just angled his way to the end zone. Brumbaugh with the pressure coming up the middle, kind of bailing out as he makes the throw, but look at that adjustment by Watson as he cuts to the inside, sees the ball as a little bit off target, runs underneath it and scores untouched for his second TD catch of the day. You can certainly see what the University of Pennsylvania thinks they've got in Justin Watson coming their way. What a tremendous talent he is. That touchdown reception is 21st of the season. Al Pagnoli has been salivating with this guy coming in to help the Quakers. I mean, correct myself, that's his second touchdown today, so he's got 22 now on the season. One from six yards, that one from 64 yards out. Another penalty on Imhotep on the extra point attempt. So there's always the temptation that maybe you go for two, but it's out there, we'll kick the, the extra point. Half the distance. Eight penalties now against South Fayette, or excuse me, against Imhotep. Again, in terms of total yardage, it's only about 30-some yards, but it certainly changed the tempo and this game around. Did so as much as anything on that first drive, but he kept the drive alive. And remember, South Fayette was in a third down and 13 early on in that drive, and back-to-back -back penalties put them in a third three. They picked up the first down, and then they picked up another first down along the way on a procedure penalty, and they were off to the races ever since. Oh, by the way, Christian Brumba move on over <laughs> after that touchdown pass as younger brother has passed you. There's the first one to Watson, back of the end zone. Watson faked in, went to the flag, sharp the tight end, wide open, beautiful throw. 53 yards untouched, but the most impressive one is this one. He's under some pressure coming from his backside from Bard. He gets it out there with a touch and enough arm strength to allow Watson to run underneath it, and he scores untouched for the third Brumba TD pass of the afternoon. Now you, you really are going to see what Imhotep is made of because this is not an area they are used to. Two losses this year, one to a powerhouse, one where the starters didn't play the second half on Thanksgiving. They have not been in this situation. And the kickoff for Brian Coyne rolls into the back of the end zone. And so Imhotep's third possession will start with 11.45 to go in the first half from the 20 yard line. As Steve said, the loss came to Eastern Christian Maryland, a nationally ranked team that has a quarterback by the name of David Sills. If you don't know that name, you might know the story. Lane Kiffin, at the time, the head coach at the University of Southern California, offered him a scholarship when he was in seventh grade. He is now the quarterback for Eastern Christian Maryland, and Imhotep played them in a non-league matchup, lost to them 36-28. The other loss, by definition, was against Martin Luther King on Thanksgiving Day when they had to play Katasakwa two days later in the first-round playoff game. So Albie Crosby with a lead at halftime pulled his starters, and ultimately Martin Luther King came back in the second half and won the football game in the final seconds. So in essence, it has been a relatively upbeat season for Imhotep in terms of playing ahead, not from behind, but that's what they're do trying to do here. And what he did with his starters at Thanksgiving was he had them change out of their uniforms. They put their sweatsuits on so he would not be tempted to put them in in the second half if need be. Playing Katasakwa two days, two days later, Katasakwa was in the same boat. They had a Thanksgiving Day game against Northampton as well. So out of an eye formation, Waters is the tailback. And C.J. McCollum is the fullback. They're going to throw the flanker screen. Great job of the catch by Nasir Bonner. Had to go up high to make that catch. He gets bumped out of bounds at around the 25 or 26 yard line. Bob, if it wasn't your first question to Joe Rossi today, it was one of your first, talking about being able to match up with the speed of Imhotep Charter and the comparison to Al Equipa, which is the standard in the western part of the state. And Joe Rossi, he was not concerned at all with what Imhotep might bring speed-wise. He said, we were able to handle Al Equipa. I think we can stay with these guys as well. They beat the Quips 34-28 in that WPL final. It was a great game from Heinz Field. Snow, winds, cold. Mike Waters on the carry up the middle. 27-yard line is where they'll spot it. It's going to be fourth down. And we will assume that Imhotep will punt the football. DeAndre Scott back to punt, but that doesn't necessarily mean he'll, he'll, he will follow through. And Drew Parks is staying on the field as well. Looks like they're going to go for it, Bob. 
Well, I got either a gutsy call or some might say a bit of a panic move early on, but Imhotep trying to change this game around with South Fayette right now in command. 20 left to go in the second quarter on top 21-0. And a flag thrown from behind the line of scrimmage, which means it's probably going to be a delay of game kind of penalty against Imhotep, and that'll change things up com completely. In addition to which, a Panther is down on the field. And that is Aaron Ruff, their Temple-bound offensive guard. It is definitely a delay penalty, as the play clock was at zero. And that makes this even worse for Ruff because it's a play that was not going to count. So everything that could have gone wrong for Imhotep in the first quarter and a half, not even a half, is could have possibly gone wrong, has gone wrong, including what is happening right now. Their best offensive lineman, a part of a offensive line that goes 6'3 and a half, 288 across the front. And Aaron Ruff is no doubt the leader of that at 6'5 and 280 has already given his verbal that he will head and play for Matt Rule and the Temple Owls. And it's good to see him getting up and getting off the field under his own power. But it looks like it might be a shoulder issue, the way it's you know, kind of dangling that left shoulder. It appeared that they were underneath that left shoulder pad. 6'5", 303. Penalty was delayed again in the offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Ruff pulling on the play, actually ran into his own man while he was engaged with a defensive player. Again, the ninth penalty on that play is going to change the scope of things. Now they're going to, it's going to make them punt the football. And DeAndre Scott with a good punt and a fair catch by Connor Beck right at midfield. We talked a lot about the offense for South Fayette. How about the defense? Joe Rossi has, a, has something to say about that. Yeah, we've been, uh, you know, we're an undersized group that runs the football real well. And, uh, you know, against these guys, we're going to have to uh, continue to do that. You know, we've got a good secondary. Uh, we lost one of our key secondary kids, but we've had some guys step up. And uh, our secondary gives us a chance to be able to bring some pressure. And uh, the guys have gotten to the ball real well. That's Roman Denson, who was the guy who was missing. And there's the pick, DeAndre Scott. He was zoning in on Justin Watson. He's seen enough of Justin Watson finding the end zone. And Scott, over from the safety position, anticipated it and picked it off. And fortunate for South Fayette that he was not able to head up field because he is <laughs> dangerous as a return man. Seven returns this year, 14 in his career. He had a feeling that maybe the Lions would go downfield after that short punt. And DeAndre Scott, on his way to Arizona State, was more than ready for it. So the interception gives it right back to Imhotep at the 29-yard line with exactly 10 minutes left to go in the first half. Again, eye formation behind Andre Druitt Parks, the junior quarterback. C.J. McCullum is the fullback. And now Nasir Bonner is in at the tailback, and he'll get the handoff, dancing his way and to follow that big offensive line. It gets him maybe two yards, maybe three. That's about it. Aaron Ruff remains on the sideline for Imhotep. Here's the interception. Scott just reading the quarterback, and the ball's a little underthrown. If it's on target, Watson's behind the secondary again for another touchdown, but a great read by Scott. Three-yard pickup for Nasir Bonner, his first carry for leading rusher on the season for Imhotep. Play action fake. Stuart Park wants to throw it. He's got his favorite receiver, DJ Moore, out very close to a first down, right around the first down marker at the 39-yard line. Tyrone Barge has come into play right guard for Ruff. There are no two-way starters on this Imhotep team by design. There are guys that'll play both ways here and there. Barge is the first offensive lineman up, but he is a guy that starts in the defensive line, and normally that's it. 37th reception of the season for DJ Moore gives them a first down. Nasir Bonner is spinning his way out of tackles in his own backfield. And by spinning his way out of, out of those tackles, he may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. One thing with an undersized defense, as Joe Rossi called it, is you sometimes need to use your quickness to get away from blockers. And between the tackles right now, Imhotep is not having a whole lot of success. You wonder with the speed they possess in the backfield, at some point they try to get the ball outside and see if guys can make a cut up field and gain yardage that way. Bonner lost a yard on that 
So it's now second down and 11. He's got trips to the right and one to the left. Druitt Parks out of the shotgun. South Fayette looks like they're bringing the entire student body on blitzes. Parks has it batted down at the line of scrimmage. Nice job by Talik Rayner to pick up Zach Walker on the backside blitzing, but if you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. I think it was Berkowitz. Ben Berkowitz, 6'2", 225 pound senior, who got his hand up there and swatted that one down. Third down and 11. And that's who it was, Bob. He's a guy that has nine sacks, so he knows how to get to the QB, but couldn't get there that time, so he becomes a different defender and knocks that ball down. It forces Imhotep now into the third down 11. Now they'll, they'll flip flop it, trips to the left this time. And again, they show everybody coming. Takes one way, he's in trouble, sets up the screen, but can't find anybody open. The ball's on the ground, incomplete. And that'll bring up a fourth down. We check in with an injury update with Mike Zambelli. All right, thanks, Bob. I tried to get the report. All I could tell you is what I saw visually. They worked on the shoulder of Aaron Ruff. They put an ice pack underneath his shoulder pad. He sits by himself on the bench right now. I don't think he's going to be able to return, but that is not official. All right, thank you very much, Mike. Again, looked like just the way he was walking off the field that Mike's right on it, that it was a shoulder issue, maybe a stinger of some kind. Nearly had that one blocked. As DeAndre Scott takes a long time to punt that football, but fortunate to get that off. It's a short kick, and South Fayette with a 21-0 lead when we come back to Hershey Park Stadium after this. You should wake up to eggs each day, and then you'll be on your way with so much energy for your whole family. When you've got a real big test, and you want to be a best, the incredible edible egg. It can keep you fuller longer. It might even make you stronger. It might even grow your hair. Fine, we're exaggerating there. Microwave it or make quiche. That's a funny word, quiche. The incredible edible egg. Learn more at Facebook.com slash Incredible Edible Egg. PCN Sports has always been your ticket for exclusive access to high school and collegiate games across the state. That ticket just got better. Watch whenever and wherever you go. You never have to miss the big game with the PCN Select app. PCN Sports and the PCN Select app. For on-the-go sports fans, it is the best seat you can get. If you think the level of competition is impressive, wait till you see the level of coverage. High school meets high impact with MaxPreps.com, America's most comprehensive source for high school sports. Find out how your local teams compare, who's in the hunt to be state champs, and which teams and players are leaving their stamp on the national stage. Get pumped on your high school teams. Log on to MaxPreps.com. 21 nothing. if you're a Lion, you got to be dancing. And they are dancing right now all over Imhotep. 21 nothing. Lions on top, and they have the football following the timeout. And following the new year, we'll remind you, we've got some wrestling coverage coming your way as Grant Fetchett on the carry across the 40 to about the 41-yard line. They'll kick off our high school wrestling coverage here on PCN, and we'll do so with the Gatorade Power Wrestling Tournament. And then wrestling coverage, you can find it on our website for a full schedule of wrestling, high school wrestling coming your way in the new year. Grant Fetchin picks up about six yards on the play on his third carry, second down and four coming up now for South Fayette. Don't forget about Fetchin. He's run for 1,300 plus yards on the season. Just his third carry so far. Limbaugh, however, having Pickens today. He finds back, gets a blocking into Imhotep territory, makes a couple of players miss at the 40, and will get wrapped up at about the 33-yard line. And that is what some people, and mostly Imhotep people, would call a pick play, as Watson took two defenders, a little contact on the inside, as Watson's the outside receiver, he comes in right there with some contact before the ball arrives as he gets a piece of one of the defensive black backs, and that allows Beck to be wide open and head upfield. 200 yards passing now for Brumbaugh on that 25-yard completion to Connor Beck. Beck's 30th catch of the day. He's 81st 
of the season. Right back to the ground game of Fetchick. Fetchick driving and trying to drag a tackler with him inside the 30 to about the 29. He'll pick up four. Bob, I thought one of the, the most interesting comments we got from Joe Rossi before the game, you know, we asked who's being recruited, and sometimes you, you get so stuck on those Division One guys that you forget about some of the key components of the team. He goes, we've got a lot of Division Two, a lot of Division Three guys, seniors right now that are going to play at the lower levels. They're the types of guys you need to win a state championship. Uh, I've said it a uh, hundred times in these broadcasts. It's only it's the, it, those are the guys who win your state championships. The guys like a Connor Beck who plays as a wide receiver, plays as a defensive back. He returns kicks. He returns punts. Does a little bit of everything. Brett Rumblaw looks for all-time Connor Beck. And he'll pick up the first down inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. All Connor Beck did in the WPIL championship game against Aliquippa was catch the winning touchdown, just barely got to the goal line, and then sealed the win with an interception. As Bob mentioned, he plays on both sides of the football, just a heads-up football player, able to get some separation from the defender. Look at the hard extra yardage he picks up, and they're in business again inside the 20-yard line. First and 10 at the 18. Route right back to the ground game, and it's Fetchett looking, waits to tackle the ball's gonna lose, but right there to fall on it was Zach Walker, flag thrown as well. As the ball was stripped right out of the hands of Grant Fetchett, but following the play was offensive guard Zach Walker to fall on it, but a flag thrown from behind. I think it's a holding call against South Fayette. Bob Grimola, the referee, threw the flag. <laughs> this team is plus 15 in turnovers for the year. Holding the offense. 10 yard penalty. Remains first down. Third flag thrown against South Fayette. Pales in comparison to the nine that have been thrown against Imhotep. You know, the Lions average five penalties a game. I think it, it just gives Brumba more operating room. <laughs> Opens up some daylight. It worked once before. It'll remain first down now. And we'll call it 17 to pick up the first down. And to get inside the 10 to about the 9 to pick up the first down. Brumba right back to work. Can't find anybody open. Throws that one away. He's fortunate that he threw it away because defensively, Vadim Starks was almost there for the pick. Our coverage of high school football state championships concludes tonight with the Quad A final St. Joe's Prep and Pittsburgh Central Catholic will square off against one another. We'll be on the air starting at 5.55 for tonight's Quad A state final, exclusively live right here on PCN. Second down and 17 now for South Fayette from their Imhotep 26 yard line. Brumba all kinds of time, that went low. He was looking for his tight end sharp, but it was broken up. Getting a hand on it was Randall Hunter. Hunter didn't even really see that pass coming his way. Didn't have a chance to react to it. And Imhotep now is starting to get a little more consistent pressure on the quarterback, forcing him to get rid of the ball a lot earlier than he wants to. Looks like that one slipped out of his hand. It just is not normal coming out of Brett Broomball, the way he's been firing the ball over the place. And again, movement on a jump by South Fayette. Oh, excuse me, by Imhotep to be the 10th. Good ball. Coachman, the defense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. So it's now third down and 12. Again, a reminder, the Powerade Wrestling Tournament kicks off PCN's wrestling coverage. Our weekly wrestling coverage begins in January. Go to the PCN's TV website for more information on the schedule of high school wrestling coming your way in the new year. Third down and 12 now for the 21-yard line. Rumball looks for the out pattern. Pass is caught right around the sticks by Schmieder. Or excuse me, it's Hayden Orler on the catch. And South Fayette is not happy with the spot. Thought he had better forward progress. Look at this timing. Orler, as he makes the cut, the ball is already in the air. And he gets driven back a good yard or two. So he is a couple of yards shy of the first down. So they'll spot it at the 11. As I said before, they need to get to the nine to move the chain. So we'll call it fourth down and about two. And decision time for South Fayette. Do they kick the field goal? Or do they go for it on fourth and two with a 21-0 lead? So the first catch of the day for Hayden Euler. Now the changing in personnel. Now Brumball looks like he's going to come off the field. Justin Watson needed to be tended to on the side. Got a bloodied up elbow. So that is 
mandated to have to come out and get that covered up. Brimbaugh comes to the sidelines, gets the play, and what they want to do on fourth and two. Do you take a timeout here so you can get him back in the game? Play clock is now at 10. I don't know on fourth and two if they're going to go to Justin Watson or not anyway. Quickly to the line of scrimmage. Play clock down to two. They're going to have to call a timeout just because of that. South Fayette will call timeout. the first timeout. South Fayette. South Fayette was here once before. It was in 2010. Wasn't quite like it was today for Joe Rossi's team that day. Christian Brumbaugh, again, was the quarterback for that South Fayette team against West Catholic. Early on, they got the start finding Zach Challingsworth, who's now playing at Pitt for the early touchdown to put South Fayette, South Fayette in a good position. But from that point forward, West Catholic and David Williams, who's now playing at South Carolina, get taking things over. Anthony Reed with a big touchdown pass to Jalen Strong Williams. And West Catholic just started to roll from there as they just couldn't get it going. Behind the offensive explosion of Anthony Reed and company, him, there you see him scrambling for the touchdown. Rumba's day wasn't over. One more pass to Challingsworth in the end zone. But it was that was it in terms of the offensive plays for South Bay at that day. Brandon Holman with a touchdown, and it was a rough day for Christian Brumbaugh that day as West Catholic won that state championship in 2010, 50 to 14. West Catholic, after losing one in double overtime to Wilmington in 2008, won that double A championship in 2010. Their assistant coach, one of their assistant coaches, is Albie Crosby, who's now the head coach for Imhotep. Fourth down and two, following the timeout. They play action fake, Rumbaugh wants to throw for it. Looking for the back of the end zone, but it's over the head, incomplete, looking for Logan Sharp. And Imhotep will take over on down. Had some room to get that ball in there. Not terrible coverage as Imhotep was not fooled all that much on the play, but the ball just a little bit off target for Sharp in the back of the end zone. A big stop for Imhotep Charter. Still a long way to go in this football game, but I think if you're the Panthers, you want to you want to get something going here offensively, and if you don't score points before halftime, at least get something positive going, some momentum building from the offensive side of the ball. Have just two first downs so far in this football game. What it's worth, South Fayette has 10. They're now starting from their own 11. DJ Moore will go in motion. More movement at the line of scrimmage. Aaron Ruff still not out there. As Mike Zambelli reported from the sideline, he, from what he could see, he didn't think he might be com coming back at all today. And this one will again be against Imhotep. Big ball, legal procedure, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Back to the six-yard line now for the Panthers. It was amazing to see all the flags here in the first half and infractions along the line of scrimmage. You're not seeing pass interference, personal fouls. It's offsides. It's illegal procedure. 11 penalties against Imhotep. Now they run it from a stack on the left side. Moore now goes in motion. They hand it off up the middle. And a good job by Waters to get away from one tackler. It gets good blocking up the middle. He gets some of it back from what they lost in the penalty. Puts it to the 15-yard line. A nine-yard pickup. And they're going to go no huddle as Ruff tries to shake it off on the sidelines, but still not looking good over there for the Temple bound guard for Imhotep. Second down and six after the nine yard run up the gut for Waters. Right back to it. And he bounces it to about the 19 yard line. Got four. It'll be a third down and a crucial two coming up for Imhotep. Joe Rossi knows from watching film on Imhotep. He said they're dangerous anywhere, anytime. Two, three yards, 65. Four <laughs> yards, one yard, 55. He said they can really get a touchdown on you in a hurry. You have to be very, very careful with their big play capability. DJ Moore splits out to the left side. To the right side comes Nasir Lewis. Third down and two. Drew Parks under center. One back in the back. Two tight ends set. It's Waters gets the call and the surge up front. Should get him enough for the first down. It'll be close, but I think he's got it. He got that spin on Zach Walker and was able to get an extra yard, and so they will move the sticks here with 3.50 left in the half. So no hurry up as of yet for Imhotep. Parks has thrown 24 touchdowns, 13 of them DJ Moore, so he's certainly dangerous through the air. Moore is split out to the right side, but right back to Waters, and he will get out of his own backfield. Tripping him up from behind with Zach Walker. 
Walker. Walker is a tremendous defensive player. Eight sacks, 135 tackles coming in. One of the inside linebackers, 54 in green, not blocked. Look at him get through the hole as Waters tries to get it outside. He's just chased down from behind by Zach Walker. Aaron Ruff, we understand, is heading into the Imhotep locker room now with three minutes of change remaining in that first half. Second down and 12 after the two-yard loss. Play action fake. Jewett Parks wants to go deep. Chased, throws it, looking for an open receiver was his tight end, Nasir Upshur. But because of being chased out of the pocket, Jewett Parks couldn't get much on it, and it falls harmlessly to the ground. And, and we should note, Bob, something you and I talked about before the game. It, it's a bit of a crosswind here at Hershey Park Stadium going from the near side to the far side, but there also is a bit of an angle to that crosswind where Imhotep would be going into the wind here in the second quarter, and that, that throw got knocked down a little bit. There you go. That essentially, if you're familiar with Hershey Park Stadium, is away from the stage and towards the scoreboard. So the flag throwing into the face of Imhotep and across them left to right as well, and that's exactly where that throw ended up, short and to the right of the intended receiver. It's now full push the Panthers into a third and 12 and they'll stay on the ground with Talik Rayner getting the handoff, trying to break some tackles, but just nothing there. A sea, a, a sea of green swarming around the ball carrier. So no momentum offensively, and, and now you don't want to give up anything here before the half is over. You're already down 21. Looks like Joe Rossi is not going to call a timeout here. He only has two remaining. Figure he's going to get the ball back. A pretty good field position. And a quarterback who's done exceptionally well, not just through the year, but also having a great day as well. And get the sidelines to help and a couple of timeouts to work with. So they'll let the play clock run down. But Imhotep's going to let it run down and call a timeout. So they're just going to trade for some time here. Yep. So Imhotep calls their first timeout. Timeout, Imhotep. So it costs South Fayette 25 seconds, and that's it. We told you before that. That man was an assistant coach for that West Catholic team that beat South Fayette a couple of years ago. And what it, did Albie Crosby learn from being here once before? Well, it helped us getting into the parking lot. Uh, <laughs> I kind of knew the direction on how to get into here and things like that and knew what the stadium looked like. Um, but also, um, it really helped just keeping the kids calm and keeping them under composure, talking about you know, how hurt she is. Um, what really was big for us this year, we played Cardinal Mooney week one out in Ohio, and we had to go on the road. And we were in a stadium similar to this at Youngstown State, so the kids are kind of familiar with that type of atmosphere, which was big. Who needs a GPS when you've been here before? This time the punt for DeAndre Scott is fielded by Connor Beck, and South Fayette will start 2.07 to go. A 21-0 lead, two timeouts remaining, and they're going to start from the Imhotep 47-yard line. And that's why Joe Rossi didn't call the timeout on defense. He was willing to trade that 25, 30 seconds because they're going to have good field position and a couple of timeouts and the win. And they have Justin Watson as well. First touchdown back of the end zone on a perfectly delivered ball. The second one, he adjusts to the inside of the throw that's a little off target and then just angles away from the defensive back and scores from 64 yards out to make it 21-0. So Broombaugh back to work across the middle of the drag route to Sharp, I believe, on the reception. That was Connor Beck on the reception. Beck takes a heavy hit from Naeem Thrones, but holds on to the football. And he's close to a first down, but going to be a little bit short. I think it's going to bring up second and one. Beck is such a gamer. He didn't practice at all the week of the WPIL championship game. He had a hip injury. He was a game time decision on Friday. They thought he wasn't going to play. He goes out, has the game winning touchdown catch, seals the game with an interception. He just loves being out there on the field. Brookloss steps up in the pocket, finds an open receiver. Guess who? Connor Beck for his sixth catch of the day. Will indeed move the chains. Well, I don't know where he's going to end up, Bob, but there's a college coach somewhere, perhaps in the state of Pennsylvania, who's going to end up with a great football player next year. Absolutely. He can do so many things. He picks up 11 on that one. Finds a spot, finds a way to get open. Rumbaugh finds him more often than not. Now he finds himself scrambling for daylight. Flag goes down as Rumbaugh goes down back at the 35-yard line. Sear Upshur there to wrap him up. But a flag thrown in the backfield of South Fayette. It's 
going to be against the Lions. Tony's had a tough first half, so he makes a big play there. Broombach coming in have been sacked just five times all year. They've gotten to him twice here in the first half. Penalty will be declined here to make it second down and long, I would think. Holding. Offense. Penalties refused. Second down. You indeed take the sack instead. So it's now back at the 35 yard line. Broombaugh's not the most mobile guy back there. He's a pro-style quarterback, likes to throw from the pocket. Second down at 18. Broombaugh fires this one complete. Beck makes it, uh, Watson again, makes a couple people miss and nearly takes it home again, but he's run out of bounds, angled out of bounds at the four-yard line. 31 on the hook up to Justin Watson. He just runs a great route, a little comeback, goes and meets the football. Another well-thrown ball by Brumbaugh right on target. And then Watson, after turning one way to make the catch, spins the other way and gets some speed up the sideline down to the four-yard line. How about 127 yards on six catches for Watson with 101 left to go. It's first and goal at the four. Watson split out to the left. Beck is slot left. Split the back, here comes J.J. Walker. He'll take it home for the touchdown. They go with the power backfield. It's the Walker brothers in the backfield, and they hand it off to J.J. the junior, and he takes it home for the touchdown. First one on the ground today for South Fayette, 20th of the season for J.J. Walker. Off the left side, gigantic hold. It's a little bit of an arm tackle attempt. That's not going to bring down J.J. Walker, and he scores easily. A well-executed two-minute drill for South Fayette. And leave 56 seconds left on the clock, but they put six more on the board. Connor Bryant Coyne on to try to make it seven. Movement again on the snap. That's twice they've had a penalty on an extra point. We heard that sound bite from Albie Crosby, and he has indeed scheduled up this season. Coachman on the defense, half the distance. Replay the try. You mentioned Cardinal Mooney from Ohio, who's always been a powerhouse in Ohio. He played LaSalle, who's been here and won a couple of quad A state titles. He played the team he used to coach for, West Catholic, who's won a couple of double A state titles. It's been a different story today against the South Fayette Lion offense. It's just clicking on all cylinders, and they lead it 28 to nothing with 56 seconds left to go in the first half. J.J. Walker taking one in from four yards out to finish the drive. Well, they had great field position after the short punt into the win. They go drag route underneath to Beck, and then Beck again as Brumbach scrambles just a little bit, and then the great route run by Watson. A little comeback and then spins to the sideline. Beck a little screen for a block. That's first and goal up the four, and then they put it on the ground. J.J. Walker off the left side, his brother leading the way to make it 28-0 Lions. They have played an almost perfect first half here in Hershey. They lead it 28 to nothing. Just to finish that thought about Imhotep, Albie Crosby talking about that with us last year, and they're going to be playing AAA football next year, moving up from AA, and it's a voluntary move up. They don't have to be moved up because of their enrollment, but he said, and he talked about this with a guy who knows a little bit about that, that their, their athletic director is Andre Noble, and of course they moved up last year to AAA after winning a couple of AA basketball titles and won the AAA title this past year. But he said, you know, we, we want to play bigger schools, we want to play the AAAs and Quad A's, and as a AA, most of them don't want to play us. So they're voluntary to be voluntarily moving up so that they can play some AAAs and Quad A's, get themselves ready for a state championship run again having a difficult time, however, today. And Bob, I asked him about what we talked about earlier, the no two-way starters, which is very unusual for a class AA school, and he said that is by design. He said, I want more kids to be able to play. He said it also allows us to reload from year to year. One guy graduates, I'm not forced to replace two positions. I'm only forced to replace one, so we have the experience. We get guys that are ready to go, and he said it makes our practices run smoother. You're with your group all the time. And he said during a game, we can coach them on the sidelines. If the offense is on the field, we can have the entire defense over there and going o go over things in a huddle on the sidelines. Right now, they need to get the offense on track. Two receivers each side, but again, the pass from Druid Parks is behind his intended receiver, Khalif Clements. And so it stops the clock with 41.7 seconds to go down with second down and 10 coming up. Four straight incompletions for now, now for Andre Druid Parks.
This time they'll stack the receivers on the right side. DJ Moore, their top receiver, is the back one of that stack. Mark steps up in the pocket and it's picked off. Picked off in the middle field, it's Connor back, and he's going to take it to the house. And he's got one man to beat, dives for the pylon. Touchdown, Connor back from 45 yards out. I was just going to say, the one thing you don't want to do is make a mistake here because there's still two timeouts left for South Fayette, but the mistake comes with the touchdown as well. And who else? The guy who was around all the big plays, Connor Beck, with his third interception of the season, and he returns it 45 yards for a touchdown. Talk about what he does on every side of the ball, just back there playing center field. You see him on the left side of your screen. Pass too high, but not for that man. And he knows what to do with the ball in his hands as well. And watch it dive for the pylon for five yards out. He caught it. And as a result of that, the Lions will tack on six more and look for the extra point as well. What a stunning first half. Again, Joe Rossi told me earlier this week, there were not many people that thought we could get out of District 7, much less make our way to Hershey Park Stadium in December. While a lot of folks throughout the year have called Imhotep the best team, not in AA, the best team in the state, regardless of classification. I've heard that on numerous occasions. South Fayette has had a little something to say about that so far this afternoon. So now on to attempt the extra point comes Brian Coyne. Four for four to start his day. And make it five for five and make it 35 to nothing in favor of South Fayette. As the Lions have poured it on and now their defense is cashed in as well. And if it wasn't Imhotep that most people thought would be in the double-A final or would be the best team in double-A, it was the defending runner-up Al Equipa. And the confidence factor from South Fayette after they beat the Quips in that WPL final has certainly carried them through the playoffs after a win over Carn City and a tough fought game against District 10 champion Hickory. They're all over Imhotep today. And I remind you, whether you want to know whether there's going to be more of this winter, if you can possibly imagine such a thing, but finding out on Groundhog Day, February 2nd, the tradition continues in Punxsutawney here on PCN. All I know is after this week, he <laughs> better not see his shadow. <laughs> <laughs> it has been an interesting weekend. The AA and Quad A championship games both delayed. They, of course, they were originally scheduled for a Saturday matchups because of the snowstorm that came through Pennsylvania yesterday. Both games are moved up today, taking error on the side of caution. PIAA had made that decision early on Friday morning. As Mike Zambelli told you early on in this game, both these two teams were notified and could, if they needed to, change their plan. South Bay was already on the road and decided to come here and stay. Imhotep had not yet left Philadelphia, so they stayed home for the other day, but they were both in town, of course, yesterday as well. It's all part of the fun that is a road trip to a state championship. You've got a lot of obstacles you've got to overcome to get here. Imhotep and Albie Crosby certainly thought they had overcome a lot of those obstacles. They've got a huge obstacle to overcome right now. They'll have it back now with 20 seconds to go, starting first and 10 from their own 32-yard line. They'll keep it on the ground now. Zach Walker in on the tackle of DeAndre Scott, hoping that Scott can make something happen. Picks up about eight on the play. Fourth carry of the game for DeAndre Scott. And they go right back to him. But the South Bayonne defense is leading for number five. That was J.J. Walker up to make the hit. That'll be the final play of a brilliant first half for the South Fayette Lions. Anything they could have wanted to do, they accomplished it in half number one. Still have 24 minutes of football left to play here in Hershey Park Stadium in the double-A final. But South Fayette on top of Imhotep, 35 to nothing at the break. Just an unbelievable first 24 minutes of football for the Lions, both sides of the ball, they were almost perfect. And we'll find out if they can get any better with Mike Zambelli and head coach Joe Rossi. Coach Rossi, tremendous first half. I don't know how you played this out in your mind, but you have to be shocked at being up 35-0 here at intermission. Yeah, I mean, just, uh, you know, I, honestly, I just think that day off yesterday, 
just did wonders for us as a team and just uh, I just I don't even know what to say I'm so proud of these kids and their effort and all the way through all three phases of the game just been tremendous are you more pleased with looking up there and seeing 35 points or seeing zero under him in hotel you know what we had a speaker come in dr kevin elko he talks to alabama he spoke to our team on thursday they told the guys don't look at the scoreboard one time and he talked about sawing wood and keep chopping away and then our kids i heard him on the sidelines talk all day don't even look at the scoreboard just keep playing one play at a time Coach, keep chopping. Great first half. Thank you very much. Bob, Steve. Thanks very much, and thanks, Coach Rossi. It'll be a good halftime for him. It'll be an interesting one on the opposite side for Imhotep. We'll find out a little bit more from Mike Zambelli, Jim Wills, halftime highlights and more coming your way at the break. It is South Bay at 35, Imhotep nothing in the double-A final. my A game today. I've worked hard for this. Got to give 110%. I've trained. I've prepared. Don't forget, leadership, teamwork, communication. That's right. A game today and every day. Stay involved in interscholastic athletics. Become a PIAA registered official. Stay in the game. Hi, sweetheart. Hey, you two. It's dinner time. When Marcus and Michelle were starting their family, they came to the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency for their home loan. We're proud we could help Marcus, Michelle, and Mia. If you're looking for an affordable home loan or refinancing option, give us a call. We offer down payment and closing cost assistance too. Call us weekdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or check our website. We're the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. We help home ownership dreams come true. The world will little note or long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. PCN commemorated the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg with battle walks, lectures, and many other events throughout the year. We took you onto the battlefield with four days of unprecedented live coverage, showcasing the special events from the National Park Service and the town of Gettysburg. Historians, park rangers, and many other experts helped us to understand why Gettysburg was the turning point of the Civil War. Go to the PCN store at PCNTV.com for your copies of the programs that helped us to understand the motivation, tactics, and sacrifices that happened in a small Pennsylvania town in 1863. We haven't forgotten, and neither have you. PCN, for all things Pennsylvania. Oh, the holiday season. Mall crowds may be frightful, but to shop at PCNTV.com is delightful. And in case you don't know, the PCN store is the way to go. No stress, no crowds, no lines. A computer is all you need. Find that perfect gift for that someone on your list, all at your fingertips indeed. So what are you waiting for? Put a little PCN into your stocking, all at the PCN store. A frigid day once again here at Hershey Park Stadium and South Fayette warming things up on the sidelines of the Lions. They lead mighty Imhotep Charter. The Panthers 35 to nothing our halftime score as we welcome you back to our halftime show. Mike Zambelli joined by Jim Wills and I don't know that there can't. Everybody has to be surprised at this halftime score, Jim. No question about it, Mike. It's a shocker. You didn't really think it would go this far at this quick a stage, but they got confidence. That was the key for them. They got confidence early, and the confidence kept rolling for them. Joe Rossi talked about his defense. He said, we might surprise some people here this afternoon with our team's speed. I thought one of their keys was their ability to neutralize the speed that everybody thought Imo uh, Charter may have had an advantage with. Yeah, see, the thing of it is, Mike, they played Aliquippa in that championship game for the Whippeal. Aliquippa, very similar 
to Imhotep Charter, mm-hmm. and they thought, well, if we could do it to them, and they only gave up 200 yards to them, we could do it to these guys, and they've done it to them, and they've done it even a little bit more. We'll talk more about the game in a minute. I don't know that we have seen a better half of football in all of the play of this tournament. Take a look at Imhotep Charter coming in here. Actually, well, take a look at the brackets in the 2A classification, and both teams' journey to get here to Hershey. Imhotep Charter coming uh, from the top with a win last week over Burks County. Catholic and of course uh, South Fayette uh, battling through the Whippeal. There were a lot of folks, Jim, that didn't think they'd survive the Whippeal tournament this year. Right, and then they had a tough game the next week against Carn City. They, you know, they had to go come from behind in that ball game, Mike. So I think Coach Rossi was happy that their come from behind game was last week because it certainly isn't here this afternoon. Imhotep Charter located obviously uh, in Philadelphia on Godfrey Street, the 2100 block there. It is a school that was founded in 1998. They participate in the Philadelphia Public League uh, Division II, and they have some very impressive wins. I heard Steve Degler talk earlier in the coverage of the first half that there were some folks that felt that Imhotep Charter may have been the best football team despite the classification as well. And you look at the beating Youngstown uh, of Ohio and then LaSalle College High School of the uh, Philadelphia Catholic League and a real player here in this state tournament. And there are very impressive wins on that schedule. Yeah, Mike, they did a great job. Obviously, LaSalle very tough this year. Lost to St. Joe's Prep in the finals for them and they beat them 40 to 28. Carla Mooney, always tough out of Ohio. They did a great job. And then they went through the rest of the league and they averaged a ton of points. They scored 40 or more points in 11 games this year so they've them been an opportune with with offense they've been so very very good the, the martin luther king game at thanksgiving day game the guys talked about that one being they played half their half of the uh, uh, game and then uh, uh, gave, turned that one over to the uh, second and third teamers, but rebounded back-to-back shutout wins. They have to be in shock right here. Shutting out on an explosive Catasauqua team and Burks Catholic. They've been torched for 35 points here in this first half. There aren't obviously a lot of highlights uh, for them. Uh, again, they are in the public league. Prep Charter also in there. They do win the uh, AA division there combined with the single A's, but impressive 12-2 and two record overall. Well, one of the things, Mike, and you, when you talk to coaches over the years, running up those those games where you win them easily sometimes comes back to haunt you. And I think you could see the shock on their faces. We're on the sidelines. You could see that their kids are in a little bit of a state of shock as to them getting beat and getting beat so bad at this point. And that sometimes that happens when you don't get real tested down the stretch. Haven't been able to get much going uh, either on off Offense or on defense, and some of it is in self-imposed. There were a lot of procedure penalties. You just have to wonder, uh, you know, what it was. But uh, their highlight of the first half came from one of their captains, DeAndre Scott, with the uh, interception. Yeah, DeAndre Scott committed to Arizona State, and you know, he's got great speed. Going to see him break on the ball here. We have a great Cam Randall, you see number five, do a nice break on the ball there. And unfortunately for them, he fell down. If he would have had an opportunity, maybe to run that back, Mike, that might have been a different story as well. Well, and of course, it really became devastating at the end. It looked like if they could have staved off the Lions and kept it at 21 to nothing, they might have had a chance. But now they're in a mercy rule, and really they don't have a chance to win this football game. No, they're in deep trouble right now. And, and I think between the shock and the scoreboard, the, both things are really a big, big bad situation for a coach mm-hmm. right now in that locker room to talk to those kids. Let's take a look at the Lions' regular season schedule coming out of the Whippeal Class 2, Section 1. And, uh, again, uh, just – Uh, The numbers speak for themselves. Look at the five consecutive games uh, with the shutout victories over Riverside, Southport, South Allegheny. Uh, And it continued uh, the great play into the postseason. But dynamic, uh, you talked about it earlier. This is a team, I don't know, that their defense gets enough credit. They don't, Mike, and that's the thing. The D came up with with four fumbles, a turnover. With for turnovers and uh, a lot of things against Hickory, which really saved them. And that's what people don't understand. The defense helped them win that game 23-20. You knew they had to come back with Brimbaugh's arm, but the defense is what got them here this afternoon, as you can see from those five shutouts. Five shutouts, 10 opponents, seven points or less. They allowed just 129 all year, 8.6 points per game. To me, Jim, that's the story of this first half. I know offensively they were lights out, but their defense was tremendous in this half as well. And all they needed to do was get Get those two stops, Mike, the first drive and the second drive, and all of a sudden, Imhotep's thinking, we're in trouble here, and they got them right where they wanted them. Many talk about that at win against Aliquippa, preparing them for what they might see here. Here's a look at their standings. Once again, the Whippeal Class 2, Section 1. 
You take a look at the Quaker Valley finishing second, LaSalle six and two, LaSalle who was here a couple years ago. You see South Park, Steel Valley, Maduffy, Oaks, Allegheny, and Burgerstown didn't get a win, but Fayette did a great job going through there. Obviously undefeated, can't do much better than that. Scored a school record 678 points this year. So when you score that many points, you're going to have a record that looks like that. Yeah, they've added 35 more to them here, and we're just at halftime. And obviously tremendous in all areas of the football game. We're going to bring up some highlights of these guys here. And I just really think it got started with a quarterback, Brent Brown. Jim, you and I were standing on the sidelines, and the guys up in the booth talked about blustery. Those wind gusts reached up to 30 miles per hour, and Brombaugh had no problem with it at all, marching it right down the field. Yeah, I've read a couple articles this year about how their assistant coaches have tr really taught him how to use that wind to his advantage because they play in a lot of windy games. You're going to see the highlights here as he goes to Logan Sharp for the 53-yard touchdown pass right there. And you can see him. He just has a great poise back there. You can see him hit number five here Justin Watson Watson does a good job of going to the middle of the field to make that touchdown work for him he's thrown tremendous into that wind and it's been a problem for a lot of people but not for him today there was a lot made in this football game and previewing the football game about the size of Imhotep Charter on the line what a job both offensively and defensively for the Lions down linemen. They got themselves in great position, Mike. They had came out and they attacked. That first drive set the tone, and we were right there at that end where they scored, and you could just see they were impressive in that first drive. This has to be, as we mentioned, one of the best halves of football. When you look at you know special teams, uh, defense, offense, the Lions put it all together. And you're looking at a guy who could cr possibly reach 4,000 yards today in a year, so that's what you're talking about offensively. That's pretty important stuff. We talked to his brothers in that first quarter and they were certainly amped up as might as as you would figure that so it looks like uh, they're well on their way 35 to nothing we will be in the mercy rule when we return we'll say, send it back to bob and steve you're watching the double a championship game on pcn I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That moment? It was a moment that changed my life. I'd been training with my team for months, and now we had been called up for the first time. The real deal. Wildfires were getting dangerously close to home. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. The top eight reasons why students should play interscholastic sports. School spirit, sis boom ba. Is that what they used to say? For the physical and mental workout. To know the thrill of victory. It's real, not virtual. Hearing my mom over the crowd. Because sports is a metaphor for life, right? To just have fun. And the number one reason why students should play interscholastic sports. To get my family out of the house. PCN is everything Pennsylvania. Nearly two million of your neighbors watch PCN for our state government coverage. Over two million watch PCN for high school and college sports. And one and a half million watch PCN for the Pennsylvania Farm Show. PCN on TV and online. See why we are Pennsylvania's neighborhood. Oh, the holiday season. Mall crowds may be frightful, but to shop at PCNTV.com is delightful. And in case you don't know, the PCN store is the way to go. No stress, no crowds, no lines. A computer is all you need. Find that perfect gift for that someone on your list, all at your fingertips indeed. So what are you waiting for? Put a little PCN into your stocking, all at the PCN store. I'm about to ride 2,000 pounds of in insanity. I gotta stay on for eight seconds. If I fly off and get gored, well, that's the brakes. Gotta hold on tight. Hey, mister, get off, will ya? It's my turn. Bull riding at the Pennsylvania Farm Show, January 4th through the 10th. 
What will our education system look like in 20 years? How will our students compete in the global economy? Here in Pennsylvania, education continues to be in the forefront of our minds. PCN has partnered with the Education Policy and Leadership Center to present Focus on Education, a complete look at the issues facing our education system and the social and economic factors that will shape the future generations. Focus on Education and on PCN. Go to PCNTV.com for more information. The snow may be gone, but the windy, blustery conditions continue here at Hershey Park Stadium. Your Harrisburg Stampede of the Professional Indoor Football League is a proud supporter of the Pennsylvania High School Football Championships and congratulates the teams that have made it to the 2013 Finals. Run with the Herd in 2014 at the Giant Center. Season ticket package is on sale now. For more information, visit harrisburgstampede.com. Alongside Steve Degler, my name is Bob McCool. It has been all one-sided, and it might not be what you thought. If you didn't see the first half, the numbers are going to back that up. It is all South Fayette through the first half of this football game. Obviously, the numbers for the Lions have been tremendous. Just totally dominating. 277 yards to 60 yards of total offense, nearly 9 yards per play. 12 penalties against Imhotep Charter in that first half. Some very important ones on that first drive. You mentioned back-to-back -back offsides made it third and three instead of third and 13. And South Bay took advantage of those breaks and really just rolled through the rest of the first half in a dominating performance. This is a defense for the Panthers that has given up just 22 points in six playoff games, but they seem to have this thing early on in control before those penalties. And Brett Bourgeois just went to work from that point forward. And he just took apart this defense for Imhotep like it was nothing. He made one mistake, but all along the first half, as you would expect from him, he was absolutely sensational. And we'll see what Albie Crosby had to say with his team at halftime with our Mike Zambelli. All right, thanks, guys, with uh, Coach Crosby. Obviously not what you were looking for in that first half. What did you say to the guys in the locker room? Well, you know, we, we, we probably had the worst first half we could possibly have. I mean, we had a lot of, a lot of penalties, um, didn't take care of the football, and um, told our guys, hey, listen, this is what, what we just, we just, we just got to get ourselves back into this thing. And that goes back to getting one score, one stop. We get a score, we get a stop, we get a score, we get a stop. And, and then we can creep ourselves back in this thing. Um, we, are, we are well aware that it's the running clock right now and that we got to speed it up a little bit. So just got to play fast, got to play fast and go from there. Can you, uh, how about the health of Aaron Ruff? Um, Aaron Ruff uh, shoulder, but he's, he's, not, he's not that bad off. It just, it just came out a little bit, so we got it back in, but I'm probably going to shut him down for the rest of the day. Coach, thanks for taking the time. Good luck to second you very much. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. All right. A true gentleman. Not a lot of coaches would spend some time talking with us with his team in the situation he is, but Albie Crosby's just been a great guy through this entire ride. But right now, it is a dangerous situation for him. His team, he's in a world of hurt thanks to the Brett Broombaugh and the South Fayette Lions. Well, he had a great first half, and when you look at the highlights, a dominating performance by South Fayette, but that first drive was aided by those back-to-back -back offside penalties, and then back of the end zone in the corner, Justin Watson open from five yards out. They made it 7-0 with seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. Then after they pinned him on the kickoff, they get great field position. First play, Logan Sharp wide open, the tight end, 53 yards down the right sideline, 14-0 after one quarter of play. Down the right sideline again, it's Watson. Made an adjustment while the ball was in the air. Scampers in from 64 yards out. Early in the second quarter makes it 21-0. One of the few plays going the way of the Panthers. DeAndre Scott gets his sixth interception of the season. That thwarts a potential drive for the Lions, but they're able to answer right back. J.J. Walker scores from four yards out with 56 seconds left in the first half. And then 28 seconds later, they get their fifth touchdown on defense. Connor Beck over the middle with the interception, has a convoy down the right sideline, dives into the end zone at the pylon from 45 yards out. 35-0 Lions here at halftime. PCN congratulates today's competitors on making it to the 2013 PIAA Football Championships. PCN is providing exclusive coverage to these finals to a statewide audience thanks to the support of our cable partners serving more than 10 million Pennsylvanians and 3.3 million homes. Whether on cable, online, or on the go at PCN Select, PCN is your only source for all things Pennsylvania, including sports. And you, if you want to find out more information about these teams, full rosters, all available on our website, PCNTV.com. Hit the PCN Select app. 
and you can find out full rosters. And again, we've got another game coming your way here on PCN this weekend. It'll be the Quad A final. It comes your way with a 5.55 airtime tonight as St. Joe's Prep and Pittsburgh Central Catholic in what will be another Philadelphia-Pittsburgh matchup in our Quad A final. Coming your way again, 5.55 is our airtime. And so with that pick six in the highlights that you saw finishing up the first half, for Connor Beck and South Fayette. And Albie Crosby mentioned it, it will be a running clock. The mercy rule is in effect as South Fayette celebrating after two quarters of play. Nico Tap, who has at one point in time a set a Philadelphia Public League record by scoring 83 points in a game. Certainly knows how to score points. They're going to have to do it. And as Albert Crosby said, they're going to have to do it fast. And if you're South Fayette, the odds are stacked against any type of comeback because the clock will continue to run no matter what the score becomes. You don't want to relax, though. Don't let up here, especially early in this third quarter, and let the Panthers back into this game. Keep it on the ground to, re to fend off the big return, but a flag thrown on the kickoff. You're not going to believe this one. We saw 12 penalties in the first half. Imhotep was offside receiving the kickoff. One of their blockers came across too early and they'll be flagged for that. So after 12 penalties in the first half, they start with one right out of the shoot in the second. And so South Fayette will kick five yards further up. So that's the 13th penalty, Bob. Three have come on special teams. Two extra points and a kickoff. They have been jumping off sides in the get-go. Again, at the large, it doesn't seem that bad. But in terms of momentum, in terms of what it's done for South Fayette, it's been insurmountable. 13 penalties in total called against the Panthers. Now we're ready to start half number two. Again, Andre Scott is one of the return men, but it will be his counterpart back there who steps into the end zone. Tyleek Rayner stepped into the end zone, so it will be a touchback. And Imhotep had seven possessions in that first half. Five punts, the interception, and then halftime ended their seventh and final possession. And this is a team that scores 47 a game. Bob mentioned the 83 they scored September 28th against High School of the Future, a Philadelphia record. Archbishop Carroll had scored 77 in a game in 2000. They get 400 yards of total offense a game. But don't discount this Lions defense. 8.6 points per game, five shutouts, including four in a row during the regular season. Sear Bonner is the tailback in the backfield as he split waters out as a receiver, but Druid Parks will not even get a chance to get rid of the football as the defense for South Fayette swarms around him. At five yards further back, it'll be second down at 15 after the sack. And the coverage has been great as well. Now, they're not flooding the pattern with three, four receivers at a time. It's been one or two guys getting out there, and South Fayette has been able to cover them and then eventually collapse that pocket and get pressure on Parks. Second sack of the game for the Lion defense. Sure, up sure is the tight end. A little bit of confusion right now for Imhotep in terms of what they want to do and who's lining up where. Trips to the left as Bonner now becomes one of those receivers and Waters goes back into the backfield. Taking a long time for the snap count. Rick Park steps up in the pocket looking to go deep and he throws it offline. He's looking for DJ Moore, covered well by Watson. The pass was nowhere near him. Moore came in with 36 catches, 13 of them for touchdowns. He was going inside. The throw was to the outside. Dritt Parks, 57% completion percentage on the season. Just shy of 1,500 yards coming in. On the day, he's now two for eight for, for less than 10 yards. And the two completions were his first two attempts at the day. Bonner now splits out to the right side. Two receivers split to this side with DJ Moore in the slot. On third and 15. Looks across the middle for Upshur. Upshur cannot get high enough to catch the football. Connor Beck right there in coverage. 
he was open, ran a good route. 6'3", 215 pound sophomore tight end who received a couple of Division I scholarship offers just this past week from Temple and Arizona State, but the throw a little high and he couldn't pull it in. And so three straight misfires for Imhotep, including the sack, and they're gonna go for it on fourth down at 15 at their own 15. Trips to the left, one to the right. Again, South Bay is going to bring the house. Seven men at the line of scrimmage, maybe even eight coming in. And Drew Parks has to step up in the pocket, looking downfield. He's got DJ Moore at midfield and into South Bay territory. Watson finally drags him out of bounds at the 38-yard line. That'll go as a 45-yard hookup as DJ Moore, their leading receiver of the season, gets the pick, the big pickup. What a great play by Parks to keep this play alive. Pressure coming. He's going to take a hit as he throws the football. Two guys on him, but he gets it downfield while on the run and puts it right on the money to Moore, who's crossing from the center of the field toward the hash mark, catches it in stride, and then gets it down to the 39-yard line. That's a fantastic play by Parks and by Moore. At the 39-yard line now of South Fayette. A do or die situation for the Panthers. They come through with a big hiccup. Here comes DeAndre Scott out of the Wildcat, but he has just found nowhere to run against this South Fayette defense. DeAndre Scott with his sixth carry of the day, and he lost yardage. He's going to be one yard further back. About six carries and 10 yards for DeAndre Scott. And Scott came in used sparingly on offense, but a very dangerous guy when he gets the football. He had carried the ball just 27 times, but averaging 15 and a half yards per carry coming in. One carry last week against Burks Catholic and went for 75 yards and a touchdown, but nothing doing today. Second down and 11 now after that one yard loss back to the 40. They stack receivers on either side of Druid Parks from the shotgun. Talik Rayner in there as the tailback. They go for the quick hitter. Pass is caught by Khalif Clements and quickly run out of bounds by Watson after he picks up a couple to the 38-yard line. Running him out of bounds doesn't make a difference because the clock keeps running. Now with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. And they've got to play faster. To, said to, to be able to come back from a 35-0 halftime deficit, tough as it is, but when the clock continues to run, it's going to be darn near impossible. So they've got to really get the ball and go. Yeah, especially when your ground game is virtually invisible against the inside of the South Fayette. Again, they continue to run between the tackles against the Lion defense, and there's nothing there. No gain on that play. It'll be fourth down and nine. You know that Joe Rossi coming in knew they were undersized and really didn't seem to phase him. As you can see right there, the quickness of Bryce Kristoff just to get away from the blocker, get into the backfield and have a relatively easy tackle. Two to the right, two to the left. Again, another long snap count for Imhotep before they finally get the football in play. Good Park steps up, delivers the football, finds an open receiver. It's Nasir Bonner, good for a first down inside the 25-yard line. Again, bumped out of bounds, but as if Imhotep has to understand it, just getting out of bounds doesn't stop the clock. They've played their best football with fourth and long. A couple of really big pickups here on this drive. They've got themselves down to the 22-yard line. Again, Parks able to do it with the scramble. Throw right on the money, and good catch by Nasir Bonner, his eighth of the season. At the 22-yard line. Snap the play clock down inside of 10 seconds before they snap the football. They look for the slant to DJ Moore, but he misfires on it. That will not stop the clock. That's a great point. You've got to keep going fast here. The clock continues to run. And let's face it, Imhotep has never played offensively in a mercy yeah, Not this side of the football. <laughs> the other side of the football, they're very familiar with how it works. When you're up by more than 35 points in the second half. Three to the left again, one to the right for the Panthers in a second down and 10 from the South Bay at 22. The Panthers, the Lions coming on a blitz. Park sets up the screen, has a receiver, it's Rayner. Tyreek Rayner makes man and miss at the 10, five, drives himself inside the end zone. They try to switch, switch, strip it out, and the ball does come loose, but they're gonna spot it down at about the two. What a great effort. What a great call against that pass rush, well-timed by the Panthers. And then Rayner does the rest. He had had just one catch on the season for no yards, but he takes the screen up the middle and has a first and goal at the two. 20 yards on the hookup. First down, goal to go. 
Panthers trying to get in the end zone for the first time as Druid Parks will keep it on the quarterback sneak, and they're just going to stand him up. Second down, goal to go. We'll give him a yard to the one. They gave him nothing. Actually, they did not. It's second and goal at the two. And again, you've got to get up to the line of scrimmage. Once the ball is spotted by the officials, you've got to go. High formation behind Druid Parks. McCollum is the fullback. And Nasir Bonner tries to dive with the top. The football came loose. Interesting call coming up here. Was he across the goal line before the football came loose? It appears not, and it'll be a touchback, and South Fayette will take over. Officials are going to talk it over, make sure they've got it all on the same page. And they're not on the same page right now. It appears that one official has him stopped shy of the goal line. Another official has called it a touchback. And we're going to see it here from the goal line. Bonner up over the top. And I think he's down. I think he's down. And the back hit the ground, and the football came loose as he tried to stick it over the goal line. And now they fumble the snap. Oh. Parks got it back. He leans in. I think he's got himself a touchdown. No signal as of yet. They might have spotted him down with his knee. It's going to bring up fourth down and goal to go. This is just your routine series of downs right here. <laughs> well, things have gone wrong. And again, they're, they need to quickly get back to the line of scrimmage. If you got a bootleg in the playbook, now's the time to call it. <laughs> because they are selling out in yeah, the middle. They've got nine guys in the box right now defensively for South Fayette. Fullback McCullum stacked up. Did he get in? It does not look like he did. Again, they try to pound between the tackles, and there is nothing there against South Bay as they stopped them on the goal line stand. With 4.29 to go in the third quarter, South Bay takes over with a 35 to nothing lead. You should wake up to eggs each day and then you'll be on your way with so much energy for your whole family. When you've got a real big test and you want to be your best, the incredible edible egg. It can keep you fuller longer. It might even make you stronger. It might even grow your hair. Fine, we're exaggerating there. Microwave it or make quiche. That's a funny word, quiche. The incredible edible egg. Learn more at Facebook.com slash Incredible Edible Egg. PCN Sports has always been your ticket for exclusive access to high school and collegiate games across the state. That ticket just got better. Watch whenever and wherever you go. You never have to miss the big game with the PCN Select app. PCN Sports and the PCN Select app. For on-the-go sports fans, it is the best seat you can get. History, tradition, vibrant downtowns. Main Street is coming back to play a vital role as the center of many communities across the state. PCN, in partnership with the Pennsylvania Downtown Center, brings you Discover Main Street PA. Each month, tour two communities and learn what makes these towns a great place to live, work, and play. So come discover Main Street PA. Your journey begins only on PCN, Pennsylvania's neighborhood. Motep with their best drive, and they come up at the goal line. South Bay will take over. We throw things down now to Mike Zambelli on the sidelines. All right, thanks, Bob. As you know, Imhotep Charter had opened its doors in 1998. Didn't have a football team to 2003. I'm with the first coach, Mark Wilson. Coach, I know things are not going the way you'd like right here, but take us through those early days and how this football program was even started. So the, the program was started because we had a, a group of guys, some firefighters that came to the school and wanted to help us partner in trying to start a football program. So we started from the ground up with nothing. We, we raised money, we bought equipment, we hustled games. We weren't even in the league the first year. We had to get our own games. And we just really clawed and scratched until we got better and better and better. And I mean, today we're here playing for the state championship. 10 years later, it's awesome. Back to back District 12 championships. How, what does it mean to you personally to see this program the first to represent the public league in this state championship environment? This is everything I ever wanted. I, 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 I always dreamed of this as we wanted the best for our program. We wanted the best for our students. 
So just being here for me is a dream come true. It would be even better if we would get on top of the point differential, but uh, this is awesome. This is exactly what we wanted for our program and for our students. Coach, I know it's not the result you wanted to look at up there, but congratulations. This is a big moment for the program. Thank you. It's a big moment for our program, for our school, for our city. So we're excited to be here. We're happy, and we're still fighting. We got some time left on the clock. We'll see what we can do. Thanks for the time, Coach. Bob, one of the things, the reason they didn't have a football team, they could not afford the insurance. It is part of the things of running a football program. Bye, back to you. It's a great story and a great result to get here as Albie Crosby has taken the team to the next step. They are located on North 21st Street, which is just north of LaSalle University. Talk with Albie Crosby about the size of his players, and I said, you have a weight room? And he said, well, by definition, we have a weight room. But based on what he marked off on the field for us, <laughs> he didn't walk far. I'm going to guess about 30 by 15 in terms of feet, not yards. <laughs> That's how big their weight room is. And you mentioned LaSalle University. He coached there the last two years the Explorers had football before dropping the program. He was the running backs coach, and he said, I really want to emulate a college program with what we do here at Imhotep Charter. They don't start their school day until 940, but he said our guys are in at 815 every day for mandatory study hall before they start their classes. And he said, I don't believe in being on the practice field for hours at a time. He said, an hour, hour and 15 minutes, we're done. We start at 4.30, and usually we're done by 5.45 most days. South Fayette just trying to keep the ball on the ground right now, let the running clock continue to run. It's been a diet of predominantly J.J. Walker with a little bit of Grant Fetchett mixed in. And right now the Lions are in a third down and about four to pick up the first down from the 20 yard line, starting this one again at their own one yard line after standing up on the goal line stand and Imhotep could not punch it in. Well, there's an issue where the play clock had not started. The play clock was at zeros while they were waiting for the call to come in. So now they get a new play clock. Rumbaugh will stand there and let some of it run off. He sets a man in motion, Connor Beck. He'll hand it off to Fetchin. Fetchin bounces off a couple tackles and will bounce it for a first down. Great effort by Grant Fetchin to the 25. You know, Brumbaugh, we probably won't see him throw the ball much, if at all, the rest of the day. Mike talked to his brothers earlier, Christian and Luke. Luke played at Seton LaSalle. Christian led the Lions into the state title game here in 2010, all wearing number seven in high school, by the way. And Joe Rossi said they're just prototypical cerebral pro-style quarterbacks, almost identical, all three of them, and they have great arms and they're tremendous leaders. And we are seeing a great performance today from the youngest of the Brumbaugh quarterbacks. With over 270 yards in the first half, Steve said likely will not, if not throw the football at all in his second half. And if not, he will start his senior season next year with over 6,700 yards, which is Shy of Lenny Williams from Stow Rocks, who had the all-time record, 8,509s. There's his parents watching from the stands. They have to be happy as the Brookball brothers getting to the state final for the second time. Christian, of course, getting here in 2010. Luke plays at Steve Stead, played against Seton LaSalle. And now it is Brett, who is going to lead South Fayette to a state championship. Another injury now for Imhotep. Tyrone, Tyrone Barge is the man injured right now for the Panthers. And here was that goal line stand. First and goal from the two. They go with Druid Parks on the quarterback sneak on the first down. Not much doing inside. Then they try to go over the top with Bonner. He was ruled down at about the one foot line after that ball came loose. They fumble the snap on third down, unable to get it in. And South Fayette does not want to give up points today. Fourth and goal, they stack it again at the line of scrimmage with nine men in the box. And from first and goal to two, they turn the ball over on downs. Ryan Schmieder heading to the sidelines, celebrating all the way for South Fayette as they come up with a defensive stand. And Brickers Pizza has been supplying our crew with food over the course of this weekend. We thank them for that. BrickersPizza.com for more information. And the injury timeout again as Tyrone Barge has helped off the sideline. Second big injury for Imhotep today, of course, Aaron Ruff, as Albie Crosby told Mike Zambelli, will not come back in the second half. The offensive lineman headed to Temple. Tyrone Barge, a pretty good senior in this thing. Albie Crosby told me they had an X-Factor type competition at school. And Tyrone Barge, he called a dynamic voice, finished in the top three. Interesting. 
Second down and nine, again, keeping on the ground. That is Hunter Hayes in there now at the tailback spot. First time the sophomore has been able to carry the football. That will be the final play of quarter number three. As South Fayette now has 12 more minutes to run off the clock, and they will be the PIAA Class 2A champion. 35-0 South Fayette on top as we head to the fourth quarter. Brought to you by the Pennsylvania Army National Guard. Like us on Facebook or visit us at paguard.com. The Pennsylvania Army National Guard, always ready, always there. These past few years have been tough on all of us. You worry about the economy, your job, your savings. You may even have given up on your dream of owning your own home, but don't give up just yet. We're PHFA. We help people realize their dreams of owning their own home with features like competitive interest rates, down payment and closing cost assistance, and even free home ownership counseling. PHFA can make your dream of home ownership finally come true. Find us on the web or call us to find out how. I'm Brian Hudson, and we're PHFA. Welcome home. People all over Pennsylvania welcome PCN into their homes every day. And now is your chance to knock on our door. Tell us what you think. We want to hear from you. Just email us at info at PCNTV.com. Pennsylvania has a proud, rich heritage. We are the birthplace of our nation. We share a community. We are neighbors. PCN is proud to be part of this neighborhood. From history to the state legislature, to manufacturing, to Pennsylvania culture. We bring you everything Pennsylvania. So join us in your home or online at PCNTV.com. Come share in our state. PCN, Pennsylvania's neighborhood. Fourth quarter of football to play here at Hershey Park Stadium alongside Steve Degler. My name is Bob McCool, Mike Zambelli, Jim Wills, all part of our PCN coverage of uh, high school football state championships. And again, one more game coming your way tonight. The quad A final will wrap up our weekend of football, our delayed weekend of football, that is, with Pittsburgh Central Catholic and St. Joe's Prep. We are wrong. Brett Pumbaugh does have at least one more throw in his arsenal on third and five to start the fourth quarter. He finds Logan Sharp, who makes his second catch of the day, his third catch of the day, to the 50-yard line, a pickup of 19, and moves the chains. Put another 19 yards into the books for Brumbaugh. Great touch again. They've used the tight end very well. Sharp breaks off the line of scrimmage and shuffles down the middle of the field, finds himself in the middle of three defenders. The ball dropped in there beautifully, and he's got a first down at midfield. Again, Lenny Williams, who played his high school football this year at Stowe Rocks, led them to the WPL championship game before they lost to North Catholic, who won the Class A final on Friday. Finishes as the all-time record holder in the WPL with 3,509 yards. And Brett Brumbaugh will start that his senior season next year with a very good chance, barring any kind of injury, of breaking that record. Christian held the record for a time. His older brother had over 7,100 yards in his career at South Fayette. Lenny Williams on his way to Temple as well, along with Imhotep's guard, Aaron Ruff, who was injured early in the game today. Five-yard run that time for Grant Fetchett. He's been quite a, part of the kind of the missing piece in this pass-happy offense today. But again, over 1,300 yards on the season. Fetchett nine carries at 31 yards after that five-yard run. He'll get another chance here. Makes another man miss. Drives, lowers that shoulder, and fights for what could be another first down, hoping to stay in bounds along the process. It looks like he has it. Real tough runner is Fetch at 5'11", 170 pounds, eight yards per carry, 20 touchdowns on the year. One of those guys that's very difficult to bring down, even though he's not all that big. He's shifty, he's not afraid to take a hit, and he's always moving forward. Seven times this year, he's run for over 100 yards, had a season-high 155 in the semifinal game win over Hickory. Again, that was a tough contest for South Bay at 23-20. They beat the District 10 champion to get themselves here for this state championship game this afternoon. They actually had a key safety last week to help them win that game. Here comes Fetching again, and they'll take it to just shy of the 35. Clock again, running clock. It's been that way since halftime. 35-0, South Fed on top. We talked about Temple a couple times. He's trying to build a little pipeline out to the western part of the state, aren't they? Well, they have. And the biggest pipeline has been set by 
Terry Smith, the former coach at Gateway. He was now on Matt Rule's staff, and he has certainly opened up a pipeline. They've gotten a couple of Gateway players to commit in this year's senior class. And Lenny Williams from Still Rocks, a part of that. He will be a, it'll be interesting to see what he ultimately plays in college. Will not be a quarterback in college more than likely. Matt Rule is trying to make some headway with the Temple Owls with a rough debut season. Matt Rule, if you ever listen to Matt Rule speak, it's hard not to be motivated by the new Temple football coach. Spent last year as an assistant with the New York Giants. They'll take as much time as they can here with Brumbaugh getting the play from the sideline. I wonder what his inbox and mailbox <laughs> and phone is going to look like over the next couple of months. And, you know, I, I, we cannot underestimate and uh, understate this enough. I mean, what he's done today has been impressive. But if you're standing on the field right now and you can feel how that wind is blowing, it is that much, more, it is that much better. He has been as precise with his passes as you can imagine him to be as if he were playing in a dome. And WPIL fans, you can always talk about Heinz Field right there on the river, and there's always a breeze blowing. Well, for some reason, even though we're not on the river here, there's always <laughs> a breeze at Hershey Park Stadium as well. And he has handled it beautifully here this afternoon. And you see the flags attached to the top of the goalpost. Right now they are playing into it, but it doesn't matter whether he's had the wind in his face, wind to his back, and it's a crossing wind at that. And it is not made a difference to Brett Brumbaugh. He has found receivers, and he has hit up on the spot. Right now, it's a ground control offense with a little bit of a mix in between as he finds Hayden Euler for another first down for South Fayette, just keeping the chains moving and keeping the clock running as well for South Fayette. He's another unsung guy. 24 catches, four interceptions, one return for a touchdown. He recovered a fumble in the end zone in that WPIL championship game against Aliquippa. Connor Beck let one get away, and it ended up in the end zone, and there was Orlo to fall on it for a big touchdown. More from Mike Zambelli on the sidelines. All right, guys, you're talking about the effort of uh, Brumball here in, uh, in this win, and I can't reiterate enough what you're saying about how vicious I mean, they were saying close to 30 mile per hour wind gusts. The ball's coming out of his hand so perfectly right now. A nice tight spiral. That wind is having no effect on it whatsoever. Absolutely not. And there's going to be a personal foul penalty thrown against Randell Hunter, dragging a man out of bounds. It'll be a personal foul penalty out of frustration on the part of Imhotep. Another tough run by Fetch it. Heading to his left. And then thrown out of bounds by Denby, which will be half the distance to the goal. I apologize. Personal I said foul. it was Randall Hunter, 16. It was Stephen Denby, number 26. A couple of linebackers for Imhotep. And so that'll set up South Fayette now on a first and goal from just across the five. Celebrating in South Fayette. South Fayette High School in the southwest corner of Allegheny County. Going to bring home a PIAA gold this afternoon, but one more big play by Imhotep defensively as Fetchett gets knocked backwards to the 10. Tyrone Barge, who was shaken up earlier, comes up with that defensive play. Good to see him back in there. He was able to break through and throw Fetchett down for a loss of five. But again, if Brett Brumbaugh impressed people watching that game throwing the ball in windy conditions at Heinz Field. There's been a few NFL quarterbacks that have been it brought down by the, the wind at Heinz Field. Didn't affect Brumbaugh there, and it hasn't affected him at Hershey Park Stadium either. His numbers are unreal. He threw for 463 against Seton LaSalle, five touchdowns against Carn City. And here comes touchdown number 21 on the season for Grant Fetchett as he'll dance his way in from 10 yards out. It's a 99-yard drive for South Fayette. Don't forget, this all started after that goal line stand at the one. Now we've seen a couple of impressive drives this weekend. Archbishop Wood had a 22-play, 97-yard drive in the AAA game Friday night, and here a 99-yard excursion by the Lions. All right, I'm not sure that that Archbishop Wood drive ended yet. <laughs> Here comes Coyne again on the day. Five out of five. They'll line it up for the sixth time. A 
Again, movement on the extra point attempt. That's the fourth time today that Imhotep has moved on an extra point attempt. It started the game that way, and it's been that way ever since. Coachman, defense, half the distance, go for try. Just a frustrating day all around, and everything is clicked for the Lions. Boy, that drive on Friday night was more like a tour. I think there were a couple <laughs> of meals on that one. It took so long. 12 minutes and six seconds, 22 plays, 97 yards. They will talk about that drive for a long time. High school football in the state of Pennsylvania. This one is blocked, and so with six minutes to go, the score now for South Fayette on top, 41 to nothing. That'll take us to a break. We'll come back and wrap up tonight's double-A final right after this when we come back to Hershey Park Stadium. Honey, what are all these cash rewards? Stellar checking with Smart Rewards. We earn cash on check card purchases and when we transfer money from our Stellar checking into our savings account. Cool. How should we spend them? Mm. Stellar. Stellar. Stellar! Probably groceries. <sighs> Stellar checking from Susquehanna Bank. Earn cash rewards whether you're spending or saving. Member FDIC. I'm about to ride 2,000 pounds of in insanity. I gotta stay on for eight seconds. If I fly off and get gored, well, that's the brakes. Gotta hold on tight. Hey, mister, get off, will ya? It's my turn. Bull riding at the Pennsylvania Farm Show, January 4th through the 10th. PCN Sports has always been your ticket for exclusive access to high school and collegiate games across the state. That ticket just got better. Watch whenever and wherever you go. You never have to miss the big game with the PCN Select app. PCN Sports and the PCN Select app. For on-the-go sports fans, it is the best seat you can get. One more game remaining in the 2013 PIAA Football Championships. It'll come your way tonight here on PCN 555 with our air coverage. Pittsburgh Central Catholic, 15-0 in the season, number one ranked team in the state, takes on St. Joe's Prep, a team that has been ranked among the top couple in the state at the quad A level as well throughout this season. That'll wrap up our coverage tonight right here on PCN. Hope you'll join us for that matchup. It promises to be a very interesting affair as St. Joe's Prep in the state finals for the first time ever. Going up against the St. Joe's prep team who won it as recently as 2007. It's been a while since the Vikings have been here as well. And we'll see that game for you tonight here at 5.55 will be our airtime from Hershey Park Stadium. 41 to nothing South Fayette after a 10 yard touchdown run for Grant Fetchett. And again, South Fayette kicking into that heavy wind, kicks it short. And DeAndre Scott is now one of the up men for Imhotep and he picks it up and Gets hit immediately at about the 38-yard line. Actually, that was 15 Quadim Starks, not five DeAndre Scott on the return. And so they'll start from the 38, 5.48 to go. Andre Druid Parks had a rough afternoon today. Had a couple of completions along that drive, however, make his numbers look a little bit better. And that opening possession drive for Imhotep that ultimately stopped inside the goal in a goal line stance for South Fayette defense. Tyler Nepture split out to the left in this formation. Crossover in the backfield, and it's Ty Tyleek Rayner who gets the handoff. Good open field tackle by Connor Beck, who's been everywhere today for South Fayette. And that's not a surprise. That's just the type of player he is. We talked about it early on. He's seemingly always around the ball. They had three in the backfield that time, and Beck just Read where that play was going, got to the hole, and kept it to a relatively short game. Six, uh, three yards to be exact to bring up second down and seven. Stack the backfield behind Andre Druid Parks, who wants to throw on second down. Nothing there on the right, nothing there in the middle. Plenty of time now he'll roll out by himself some more time and throws this one in the middle of the field and finds a receiver who cannot hold on. His intended target was Nasir Lewis, 
Lewis tried to make the sliding catch and could not. You know how windy it is? Back judge David Anderson lost his cap before that play started. And he was at about the 35 yard line. By the time the play was over, the cap was in the end zone. <laughs> there he is, he's got the lid back. <laughs> Didn't bother him one bit. That's how windy it is here right now. Good day to go on the roller coasters between yeah, these. Yeah, it'd be a brilliant. Yeah. Let me know breath, how that is. It'd be a breathtaking affair. <laughs> Third down and seven now for Imhotep. Clock is again, has all throughout the second half continues to run. Park steps up, finds an open receiver. In the middle of the field, wide open is Khalif Clemens. It'll be a first down into South Fayette territory as he's hardly bumped out of bounds. The 35 after 25 yard pickup. Nice job by Parks there to be patient, wait for that receiver to clear. A little soft coverage that time by the Lions. South Fayette having room to celebrate tonight as the Panthers pick up their fourth first down of the second half. All of them on the ground, on the, through the air, excuse me, after picking up three all on the ground in the first half. Dewitt Parks again throws. Good catch by DJ Moore. Justin Watson has him bear hugged at the 29 yard line. I promised the, the South Fayette folks I would mention this, Bob. They just got done this week with their sixth annual toy drive. Teamed up with the U.S. Marine Corps for stuff a bus drive for the Toys for Tots program. Students in all four buildings, elementary, middle school, the new intermediate school, and the high school, they compete to see who can donate the most toys. Last year, they had over 2,300 toys donated for the Toys for Tots program. They were hoping to exceed that this year, and they had over $1,000 in cash donated so far this year. So great job by the folks out in the South Fayette School District to try to help some of those less fortunate kids with the Marines Toys for Tots drive this year. Full start, offense. Five yard penalty, you made second down. Been a story of the day for Imhotep in terms of false timeout. starts, whether it be Imhotep. offense or defense. Now the Panthers will burn a timeout with 3.03 left to go. And it's been a highlight day for South, the South Bay at Lions. Started early on, four and a half minutes in. Justin Watson five yards out for the game's first score. Then Logan Sharp, the tight end, breaks free down the right side. He goes for 53 yards and a touchdown. 14 nothing after one. Early in the second quarter, 15 seconds in. Watson again from 64 yards out to make it a 21 nothing. Just before halftime, they got two scores in the final minute. J.J. Walker on a four-yard run to make it 28 nothing, and then Connor Beck with an interception on the run over the middle. He will return it down the right sideline, 45 yards. It was 35 nothing at halftime. And then the final score from 10 yards out, Grant Fetchett to make it 41 nothing here in the fourth quarter. Just a spectacular day all around for the Lions. South Fayette looking for its first ever PIAA football state championship. Their boys basketball team won it in 2010. They too beat a Philadelphia Public League school in that championship game, beating Strawberry Mansion 49-47. And again, here in 2010, they were the runner-up to West Catholic as the Park fires incomplete. They'll bring up third down and third down and 10 now. Again, at, at back from after the penalty. Third down and 10 from the 34-yard line for Imhotep. And as I said, Imhotep also winning a basketball championship as well. They won the AAA championship this past year after winning a couple of AA championships. Imhotep won the AAA final over Archbishop Carroll of the Philadelphia Catholic League in the AAA final this past year here at Hershey. Drew at Park buying himself some time. Finds another defender, it's J.J. Walker, and J.J. Walker will not let him get away and wrap him up back at the 45, almost to the 50-yard line. Well, it's hard to single out one guy today for South Fayette. From Brumbaugh to the guys playing defense, the Walkers have been absolutely sensational as well. Just a, a tremendous all-around effort. Third sack of the day for the defense, back to the 48-yard line, a loss of 14 more. And Bob, you know, they're pretty good too. Yeah. A queen medley at halftime. Yeah, well, you don't see that too often from high school bands. They were very entertaining. They got it all going on today, the guys in, and gals in green and white. It's been a weekend here at Hershey Park Stadium and Hershey in general for the South Fayette School District. Again, the football team's been here since Friday. The PIAA had to put people up for the extra day in the hotel because of the suspension of the games. 
And Mo Tepl will call it second time out. Again, the decision was made Friday morning. They made the effort to contact the schools and let them decide what they wanted to do and how they had to do it. They had to make the arrangements to, to, to keep the teams here if, in fact, they had gotten here. And the teams, as Mike Zambelli talked about, found something and how they wanted to handle it, found a place to practice in the with the day off yesterday. And I think without a doubt, the PAAA made the right call. Conditions were not great in a lot of the state yesterday. And it's not just it's not just the teams and their safety. You have to worry about your officials getting here, the fans being able to get here safely. Much better conditions today. Highways were clear. Not like the one a few years ago where we <laughs> 2009 cleaned our cars three times here that day. <laughs> <laughs> it snowed that much. It was a double head. And that was, in essence, that was just not going to happen one way or another, even though they moved the games up. The first two games of the weekend, they were nail biters. North Catholic winning in overtime over Old Forge 15 14. Then last night, Archbishop Wood, after trailing 3 0 at halftime with a big second half, to beat Bishop McDevitt 22 10. And how about one more final sack for South Fayette defensively as Andre Druid Parks gets again sacked all the way back at a close to his 40 yard line? And the Lion defense will officially pitch a shutout. I guess one of the highest scoring offenses in Class 2A this season. That was Kristoff, who's had himself a fine afternoon as well, getting pressure in the backfield. So South Fayette will take over, and they will have to assume the victory position. They'll take a couple of knees, maybe one, two at the most with the running clock, and they will be your double-A state champion in football for the first time perfect record to go along with it. One more handoff to Grant Fetchett. We talked about how good of an all-around player Connor Beck has been all season long and today as well. Just has a knack for being in the right place at the right time and a very tough, hard-nosed player as well on both sides of the football. Came in with 78 catches on the season, able to add to that today with a nice route there. And his best catch of the day came on defense. On the run over the middle, making a very difficult grab, and then able to turn it upfield and go 45 yards for a touchdown. That was the fifth touchdown of the first half for the Lions. And that put the mercy rule into effect, and it has been a celebration for the second half, and now Joe Rossi is gonna give a opportunity for his starters to get a curtain call as he calls the timeout with 34.4 seconds left to go. He wanted to give that opportunity for his, his team to come to the sidelines and for the fans here from South Fayette to acknowledge what his team has accomplished. It's been a proud day for Joe Ross. He talked about it at halftime with Mike Zambelli about how proud he was of his team for what they've been able to overcome this season. And as Steve said in our open, it was a team that a lot of people didn't think could win the WPIL championship not only did they win that but they're going to win the state championship as well and Albie Crosby is a proud guy today as well Mike even though his team is going to lose there is his son Devin a starting cornerback for the Panthers it's not his first trip to a state title game you mentioned Albie was an assistant coach at West Catholic well Devin was a ball boy here for West Catholic for the 2008 and 2010 games and Albie told us before the game that Devin is going to be a preferred walk on at Arizona State next year to major in either sport management or law and he hopes to become a sports agent in the future. Might have a few of his teammates. <laughs> he might, he might. <laughs> who, who might be a part of that as the final seconds will tick down. Again, South Bay had, had to take one more knee and that's it. No point in continuing this anymore. South Fayette and Imhotep, final seconds will kick, tick down and the teams will shake hands in the middle of the field. And it was a tremendous effort today for South Fayette and the Lions scored early and often, and they scored in a variety of ways, through the air, on the ground, and on defense as well. And it was defense that ultimately is as much impressive as anything, that they were able to shut down Imhotep from the get-go today. The Panthers were never able to get that offense in gear, and they shut down that man you saw a moment ago, DeAndre Scott, never able to get the all stater on track. We'll take a break. We'll come back with the medal ceremony after this. South Fayette with your winner today in Double A.
We operate our own dairy to give you the freshest milk products. Buying and selling our rich local resources is good business. Good for the environment, too. But it's bigger than that. 50 flavors big. Made in our own ice cream plant big. Big. It's one more thing our neighbors find unmistakably wise. Welcome to Pennsylvania's Neighborhood. Without any federal or state tax dollars, PCN brings Pennsylvania together. Thanks to the generous support of our statewide cable partners, we continue to be the source for all things Pennsylvania. Become part of our statewide family as a strategic partner. Find out how by contacting PCN today. For more information, visit PCNTV.com. PCN, Pennsylvania's Neighborhood. Forty-one to nothing, South Fayette wins it over Imhotep again. The Lions opted to put their offense on the field to start this football game, and aided by a couple of procedure penalties against Imhotep, it kind of set the tone early on. Mistakes, self-inflicted mistakes for Imhotep, and South Fayette took advantage of it from the get-go. They put the ball in the end zone from Brett Brumbaugh to Justin Watson, and they never looked back. They were facing a third and 13 early in this game, and Brumbaugh altered some things at the line of scrimmage. He drew Imhotep Charter offsides, back-to-back -back plays. Third and 13 became third and three, and really from that point on, it was all Lions. They were able to get down the field, score that first touchdown, came right back after a great kick and kick coverage to pin them inside the 10. There was a penalty as well. Three and out gives them great field position. They go 53 yards on the next play. And in a matter of two minutes, they went from third and 13 to leading 14-0. Part of 16 penalties assessed against Imhotep today. And it was a similar situation last year for Imhotep as they got to the semifinals and they lost to by missing it. Albie Crosby pretty much talked about that game being a game that they all but assumed that they would win. And why missing one, of course, went on to win the double-A final over Aliquippa, beat them fairly handily last year, 35-13. And it almost seemed kind of that way as well. Imhotep came in perhaps a little bit overconfident, and South Bay had, had a very quiet confidence. And again, I come back to that win over Aliquippa, and knowing that they had seen a team that in the WPIL standard is the standard bearer for quickness in Aliquippa. Well, here's what Joe Rossi told me earlier this week. When I asked him about being the clear underdog in most people's minds, he said, we use that as motivation and we're excited to meet the challenge. And then he added, we're pretty talented too. And they showed that today without question. Absolutely. As Brett Brumbaugh finishes 18 for 25, 301 yards, Three touchdowns, he did make one mistake on that pick, and that's it. So he'll start his senior season next year at South Fayette High School with over 6,700 yards and needing 1,800 yards to become the all-time leading passer in WPL standards. He has already broken the season record. He broke his brother Christian's record with his 300 yards today. He only needed 111 to do that. He, he shattered that. He also has the game record as well. He did that in a game earlier this season against Seat LaSalle, going for 463 yards in that. So he has racked up now four games this year where he has thrown for over 300 yards, including 301 in his state championship. So last night, Jared McClinton had a double-A or triple-A standard bear, 200 yards rushing, and now Brett Brumbaugh with a 300-yard passing day today for South Bay. And Bob, Joe Rossi talked about how the three Brumbaugh brothers are very identical pro-style quarterbacks with great arms, great leadership, and that's all true, but they also have a, another very important aspect of what you need to be a successful quarterback. They're very poised. They're very much in control of what they do back there, and that was extremely evident today by the youngster of the group that had just a, a fantastic afternoon. Yeah, the two big brothers are already playing collegiate football and it's only a matter of time till the the third one does but Joe Rossi more than happy to know that he'll be back next year and with that in mind certainly South Fayette will be a heavy favorite and now we're going to talk with Mike Zambelli and the winning coach Joe Rossi. All right thanks Bob. Coach first of all congratulations there were those who thought that this game might be a mercy rule but in the other direction how were you able to pull us off here this afternoon just just one heartbeat you know we woke up yesterday and saw an article that we were picked to lose 50 to 6 and taped it on the walls everywhere at the hotel and you know i just said last night 
you know, I knew last night something special happened in that room when those seniors were crying and talking about how much this meant to them. So it just was, uh, just been a special group of kids that refused to lose. Coach, you decided this afternoon, you won the toss, you decided you wanted the football, you wanted the ball in your quarterback's hand. Going into what is a 30 mile per hour win, you have to be happy with the way he responded. Yeah, my coaches were second guessing me a little bit, but uh, you know, we've never deferred. We've always said, oh, this is an offensive football show, and uh, we wanted him to, uh, and that drive he put together, and some of the kids' plays they made just uh, solidified our decision. You have to have confidence in that defense. This team averages over 47 points a game. You shut them out this afternoon. Just a well, total team effort. Great staff, great community, great place. So we're just very happy. A little different than 2010, huh? Absolutely. Second time around is always easy. You said it was, Coach. Congratulations. Great show this afternoon. Thank you, guys, very much. Thank you. Not to be understated as well, the experience of a state championship, when you get back for the second time, it all seems to make a whole lot more sense. They can tell you all they want about game planning, but when you've seen it and experienced it, there's nothing like it. We have one more to come. Again, tonight, the Quad A final comes your way, 555 airtime, Pittsburgh Central Catholic, and a St. Joe's prep for Steve Degler, Mike Zambelli, Jim Wills. My name is Bob McCool for all of us on, the, on PCN. Thanks for watching. The AA final goes to the South Bay at Lions. 41 to nothing, your final score. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll talk to you tonight.